This is a HeadGum Podcast. Live from the NBC studios in Burbank, California, The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. On May 25th, 1992, 16 million viewers heard this introduction as Ample Chin comic James Douglas Muir Leno made his debut behind the desk of America's most storied talk show institution. It followed a tumultuous jockeying for the job with then late night host David Letterman, a process that would be replicated nearly 20 years later over the same slot with Conan O'Brien. Burbank has always lived in the shadow of its much larger, glitzier neighbor Los Angeles, a shadow that's somehow even hotter. The city was often even invoked as a punchline under the previous Tonight Show host, Johnny Carson. But Leno's 22-year on-and-off stewardship of the franchise would help revitalize the image of the sprawling San Fernando Valley suburb. In addition to his nightly sign-on, Leno chose Burbank to house his massive personal garage for his collection of nearly 300 classic cars and motorcycles. The Burbank automotive assemblage inspired a TV series of its own, the Emmy-winning Jay Leno's Garage, which ran for seven seasons. Leno has a designated booth at the original Bob's Big Boy in Burbank, where he regularly appears at their Friday night classic car show, and the silver-haired denim enthusiast frequently performs at Burbank Comedy Club Flappers. And it's Burbank where, in 2011, Mark Kolkis launched a chain to fill what he felt was an unexplored niche, chopped salads. The cold dish concept had a hot start in the veggie-friendly Southland, and by 2016 it began franchising. But in a crowded market for bowls of greens, there are worrying signs for this salad seller. Already a location in the heart of health-conscious West Hollywood is shuttered, and the number of operating restaurants is down from its high of 30 to just 21 in California and Nevada. So will this chain have the reach and staying power of Leno's Tonight Show run? Or in the shadow of more prominent competitors like Sweet Green and Chopped, will this Burbank-founded eatery become the Burbank of salad chains? This week on Doughboys. Live from the HeadGum Studios in Los Angeles, California, Chop Stop. Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. I'm Nick Weiger, along with my co-host, Sterile Owens. The Spoon Man, Mike Mitchell. Like Terrell Owens? Sterile Owens, like the wide receiver Terrell Owens, but it also implying that Mitch is infertile. Thank you, Colin from Massachusetts. <laughs> it's Terrell Owens, right? Yeah. I thought it was more like Terrell Owens. Do I, do, am I, I, I guess I don't know the Terrell? emphasis. I, for, I, I remember being Terrell. I is mean, this, that, that makes the pun sterile work. As a Massachusetts guy, so I believe that he's watched football. Yeah. I think that he probably... Have you? Yes, I've watched okay. football before. I'm watching the Patriots. They're bad this year. Mm. I played football. You know this. That's right. Get Mitchell out of there. He's going to get himself no, killed. This that's story, the yeah. famous line that the coach yelled. That's right, Mitch. Though, uh, as of this episode's rele- like release, we are not in the regular season. We're in the thick of the postseason because this is the first new main feed oh, episode boy. of 2024, Mitch. The Patriots are tearing it up in the postseason. You want to make a prediction? You want to call your shot? Yes. Well, they're two and seven now. Mm. <laughs> so Be quite a comeback. Quite a turnaround. Yeah. They're going to win the next, I guess, eight games. They peel off eight in a row. Then. Yeah. They could yeah. take that momentum into the playoffs. I don't, think, I don't think it will happen. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> stranger things have happened. Great point. You seem not invested. The Celtics, now they've had a loss. The, That's I, right. You don't like me dating this, so now I'm just talking sports on dating it. It's, I mean, it happened immediately, so what are we going to do? You're talking about, like, <laughs> like, it's fine. I think the Celtics are going to... It's that, November 7th. We're recording the first episode of January 2024 on November 7th, 2023. <laughs> so there you go. It's time stamped. Say whatever you want, man. we got a good guest to start off the... Great it's guest. like a... It's, it's, it's like a... Uh, saging out the old bad guests. We're getting a new mm, guest right, in right. from later. <laughs> <laughs> Only good guests for 2024. <laughs> that's this that's is, what I think. Yeah. I think should happen. Next also week, our guest now. is uh, Mark Doofson. Oh, oh no. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. Or pot committed to Doofson. <laughs> Doofson told me he has a lot of stuff to say about Israel and Palestine. That's, yeah. So. <laughs> We'll let him talk. We'll let him. We'll give him his 20 minutes. We we promised him, and yeah. then we'll get to. Yeah, it. I don't know how he negotiated 20 minutes. <laughs> He's like, I just want twenty minutes by myself. We're like, okay, yeah, do your thing. Yeah. Uh, I, you remember uh, when we get when we we guessed on Doofson's podcast? Uh, yeah, that's that fucking like, disaster. Because he was like, we were like, where do you record? And he was like, uh, I record at the Doof Lodge. Yeah. It was like, okay, what we thought fuck it was like, the Doof Lodge. Yeah, we thought it was like yeah. his, his place or something like that, or like he had like a studio with like a nickname. 
Uh, he gives us the address. It's a Best Buy in San Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> and we get there. And we're like, and he's like, you set up, you know, you know, like the comfortable seats by yeah, the TVs. Like, it's like where people like, yeah. like listen, test out the audio video equipment. Yeah. He's like got like a Zoom mic in there. He's like, this is the, and we're like, did you get approval from everyone? He's like, yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it wasn't cool. We like, f- like five minutes in, a manager comes in here and is like, hey, I told you you can't do this. Like, Let's so just say it's been an issue. <laughs> Let's just say it ended with uh, someone from the Geek Squad in a headlock with Doofson. <laughs> it was not good. It was not good. It was not good. He had a Shure microphone on, and we're like, this seems like it's from Best Buy. <laughs> Did you open this and use it for Best Buy? And also, there's like, there, like on the TV, Avatar was on the TV, so you could hear, like, I feel like in the podcast, you could hear It was Avatar. definitely bleeding yeah. into the microphone, yeah. Yeah. It was a whole thing. Anyway, God bless him. God bless him. He's gonna, I, I, you know what? I'm interested in hearing his 20 minutes. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Wags, howdy, howdy ho to Spoon Nation. Wow. I didn't tell him. Our guest doesn't know that I... Uh, it's just embarrassing having a podcast. <laughs> a podcast is embarrassing. It is inherently it? embarrassing, sure. It's a bad... It's it's embarrassing. Yeah. Asking people to do it is embarrassing. And also when you ask them, you're like, I know. like, I, you, It's that sort of thing where you're like... I know that this is, I know this is embarrassing. You know what I mean? Like, it's hard to tell people that you're like. But contra that, when Doofson emailed us to do his podcast, the subject line was, you owe me one. Yeah. (laughs) We're like, what? Yeah. He's like, what? And what? I I will do it because we know you, but like, this is just a weird energy. I should get to our guest because I believe that Doofson did a year in Chicago and I think that our guest maybe knew him a little bit. I wonder, Uh, because I think it's possible because also when we ask people from Chicago, like, hey, you must know Doofson. They're like, who? Yeah. So it's it's like, did did he just lie? It was was possible he was just lying to us that he did a year in Chicago. He said he was main stage at Second City. Right. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he's full of it or not. I think a total uh, f- uh, fabrication, but we'll f- you know we'll find out. Uh, anyways, howdy ho to Spoon Nation. Emma hit him with a little drop. Doofson also said. <laughs> Doofson also told me he invented Thousand Island dressing. <laughs> you remember that? So I think he just makes shit up sometimes. He did, and we were like, "How did you?" And and what was it? He's like, he did, he took a trip to Greece or something. Yeah, and he's like the the idea popped into his head in Greece. That's right. Yeah, he was like on a like a, a trip, like a college trip, like a semester abroad. Yeah, and he yeah. was like, "Oh, I just came up with like the idea for like the perfect dressing," and I came home. And, and then a like, week a week later, I was like, "Oh man, I've always wanted to go to Greece." And he's like, "I've never been." Yeah, I, he yeah, said I that know. the next week. Like, Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> So I think he's full. I mean, he, I didn't believe that he made Thousand Island dressing. No, anyways. me neither. Um, anyways, God bless you, Doofson. I can't God wait bless to you have Doofson. you on in the new year. See you next week. Um, <laughs> hit him with a drop, Emma. Uh, all right. Are you a competitive person, Rich? He says yes. I am not really. No, I'm not really that competitive. <laughs> I should get. There I is should a, get a there point is a for this. It's for one one of them. I was gonna answer in cold. You can't. You, you gotta let me answer to show my knowledge. There isn't a bonus. You question. stole it. Such bullshit. I definitely came in before Libby on that one. I said it first. Give it to Mitch. What the Give fuck? It to Mitch. That's All right, Mitch, go ahead. I got that <laughs> way before. <laughs> that, <laughs> Mitch, I got it before him. Go ahead, Griffin. Griffin, he was clearly he, ahead of you. No, he was not. Oh, sucks. This is this 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 is the this was the most rigged game show in the history of game show. <laughs> Emma, don't pull any fucking bullshit. <laughs> it is true. It was rigged. <laughs> Remember Deucen said that he was at <laughs> he was at the Equinox and he saw Benicio Del Toro's dick? Yes, yeah. Where he like he like he called us, like, you gotta come over. You and I both went over his place. He was like, come over now. Come and over we're like, right I thought now. It was an emergency. And we and and we, we we yeah, we we were like, what the fuck's going on? We went over, we sat down on his couch. He's like, I saw Benicio Del Toro's dick. In the locker room. And we were like, the locker room? He's like at, it was Equinox, it's Equinox right? Equinox, yeah. yeah. Like the high-end gym. Yeah. yeah. And then and it, so like, it, we believe that like, okay, that's the kind of gym that Benicio Del Toro would work out at. Yeah, yeah. Like, plausible. But, the, but then he was like, he was like, it's purple. I think it's like a birthmark. Yeah. We were like, he doesn't have a purple dick. You're full of shit. <laughs> he was also like, that would we that would have circulated at some point. People would yeah, know. Yeah, people would talk like about him having a purple dick. And he's like, no, it's purple. It's I like swear purple. to God. Yeah. Well, yeah. Doofson circulated it. Because he had that oh. colored pencil sketching. Oh, like, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Like, this is what I saw. Yeah. <laughs> the grimace purple. And we're like, that. I mean, that seems implausible, but whatever. Well, he yeah. said he'd taken a picture of it, and Del Toro took his phone 
and sat on it in the steam room. That's and, right. Right, right. That's in, right. Until it stopped working. Yeah. And it like erased just the pictures. <laughs> we could still text, but he could no longer like he had no access to his picture. Yeah. And then we were like, what are you gonna do? And he's like, and he just kept saying lawsuit. He just kept saying that over and over again. Yeah. But I don't think he ever sued I don't think he Benicio ever sued. del Toro. No. He asked for a lawyer's like info once and then we had talked to our lawyer and he was like, No, he never got back to me. So <laughs> I think he was just bullshit like full of shit. Yeah, I think he was full of shit. Yeah. But then it makes me wonder, <laughs> why did he draw Benicio del Toro with that purple well, thing? And like, it's that's the thing. It's just the which sp- came first. Did he did he actually see this, or did he draw this and then think it would be a good lie to tell us? You wonder like how much of it is true because like, did he see? Does he like work out at the same gym as Benicio del Toro? Like that's plausible. And then he saw them and he was mm-hmm. like, oh, it, it saw him. It was like, oh, this would be a funny story if I like saw him naked and there was something weird about it. And you then know? and then I remember he so he told me that he went and this is this is when I knew he was full of yeah. shit. He's like, I went to Benicio del Toro's house to confront him about the phone. I looked through his window, and I saw him getting his dick sucked, and the dick turned from purple to white. And I was like, okay, that's fucking bullshit. (laughs) The dick never turned from purple to white. (laughs) Right? I mean, like, it's bullshit. You were, like, watching Benicio del Toro get his dick sucked for enough time for him to climax through a window, and you saw it turn from purple to white. That's what he said. That's what what he said. said. Yeah. So at that point, I was like, okay. Yeah. But I mean, like, I kind of believed him at first. Anyways. I mean, you did. We we all had, like, a bit of doubt. Yeah. Right. I think, like, we had stronger doubt. And until you heard that. Yeah. You were like, oh, that, I think he's lying to us. Yeah, that for me. I think that I think that was. <laughs> Whereas, like, coming from Chicago, I was like, Deuceson's a liar. Yeah. yeah right, right, right. Yeah, like, yeah. bar none. This yeah. guy lies about everything. He wasn't on the main stage. In Absolutely Second not. No. I think he, t- he dropped out of level A. Wow. Oh, wow. Jeez, that's, Jesus Christ. that's not good. He says he, well, no. I mean, there are competing rumors that either he dropped out or he got kicked out. But that's like saying you're a karate champion and it turns out you made like yellow belt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's that level of lie. <laughs> mm. okay. I think it's even bigger lie than if you just made, if yellow belt seems like he's actually. You could win, you could win a yellow belt competition and consider yourself a champion. Right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, he's a good guy. We're, we're still friends with yeah. him, but. This is the other thing, is that he said Benicio del Toro lived in a gingerbread house. Oh, that's right. <laughs> like, like, what? That's when you tapped out. That's I was like, oh, come yeah. on, dude. No, no, no. And yeah, that, you, you, he kept, because Nick kept being like, was like, a dick actually can turn from purple to white. Yeah, he kept I thought, like, I like, it could happen anatomically. Yeah. I, I buy that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But then I tapped in at Gingerbread House. <laughs> yeah, you did. And I was like, I was like, I was like, you gotta show. Yeah, I was out before that, and then I was back in. Yeah. And I was like, we gotta go up there and see this thing. Was well, basically my thought. Right. Deuston had said, I think, yeah, because I was back in at a certain point, but then out when Deuston <laughs> said, I followed Benicio del Toro home. Yeah. And he was riding in that car that Willy Wonka goes through, <laughs> that like goes up and down and right. spits out cream. Right. And and I was like, fuck that. And you were like, no, I'm back. I'm back in. <laughs> I had seen that. I had actually seen that car. And everyone thinks I'm a liar, but I was right. on the, the lot. The parking lot in the mm-hmm. lot, there's Dylan Klebold's car there is, is there as well. Yes, yeah. This is, the, then this also is the, the studio lot where like Own is, Oprah's Network, and Funny yeah. Guy used to be there. The Dylan Klebold car is there that is for abs- real. That is absolutely true, yeah. That it is Someone real. Someone bought then... the Columbine death car and like drives it to, to work. And Oprah gifted it to Dylan Klebold. <laughs> <laughs> you get a car. And then <laughs> you who get a car. Known mm-hmm. and... 99 was a different time. We didn't have smartphones. <laughs> Oprah didn't know who she was giving the car right. to. <laughs> oh, we defend We defend Oprah. We, we defend Oprah on all yeah, of that. Yeah, Oprah owns. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Hiya, Doughboys. I found it absurd when Nick recently claimed that Mitch is competitive. Sure, are all these clips only from two episodes? Yeah. (laughs) Did I have to edit out a lot in order to fit a lot of drop length? Also, yes, but I still believe Mitch is not competitive. Wow. With love, Brad. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Brad. That was funny. Uh, that, that is quality drop, quality roast, and mm-hmm. hey, a quality guest to, to, to kick off the year. Tim Baltz is here. Hi, Tim. Thanks so much for making time for us. Hey, cheers. My pleasure. Yeah, thanks for thanks for being here. Sorry that we one. I like didn't warn you that I do a drop, which is embarrassing. Right. But I guess it's a little bit of a spoiler alert. But we were eating lunch and it, it sucked. It was bad. <laughs> oh God. Uh, yeah. Rough. I, rough. I don't want to dislike a chain, but we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Yeah. 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 So sorry. Thank sorry. you and sorry. Thank you and sorry. But you have to apologize to most guests for what they eat to come on here, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. honestly, generally. Yeah, it's never good. Sometimes I mean, it's fun, but even if it's fun, it's usually heavy. So yeah. 
it's rarely just like but you know a- everyone either feels like shit because it's heavy or it's it's bad yeah there is a few episodes where it's good and then people don't like that's not as fun for people to listen to i think i think people would rather they want us to suck. have had a bad experience. Yeah, which you guys have a fetish for getting yelled at for a bad food experience. It seems oh, 100%. Like. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you're, like, you're grinning. That's the most genuine smile I've ever seen on your face. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. tell me it was bad. <laughs> Uh, I should. This we is, do like getting put in our place and being called like bad little boys, basically. I yeah, think. Yeah, one hundred percent. I, I want to remark on this because this was unplanned. This just happened that we are, I think, perhaps representing the three most storied franchises in NBA history via our hats oh, today. Wow. Mitch yeah. is wearing his Boston Celtics hat. I'm wearing my Los Angeles Lakers hat, and you're wearing your Chicago Bulls hat. How about that? Yeah, I almost wore a Spurs hat if that counts. Wow, so wow. that would have been number four, probably. Yeah, yeah. probably, definitely. Yeah. What about Golden State Warriors? Shut the fuck up. Uh, <laughs> fucking dorks. You tech dorks. <laughs> I feel bad for people who were fans of the Warriors before. Oh, yeah. No, like the, the Oakland fans were like the most yeah. hardcore fans in the NBA for a yeah. franchise that was largely pretty, you know, uh, kind of in a pretty futile state for a while. And then they moved to San Francisco and they start winning titles. It's And all the tech bros hop on board. It's annoying. I agree. Do you guys play hoop grids or immaculate grid? I had to stop. I got. I started doing it, and I was like, immediately, I was like, this is eating up like thirty minutes of every day. I just can't do it. I get too. I'm gonna get too addicted to it. But uh-huh. I, I do. What is it absolutely exactly? get the appeal? Do you guess is it like a is it a trivia game? Yeah. Oh, I do movie grid. I do the movie grid where you guess a bunch of. Uh, do you have, so? What is it? Is it is it like the same thing? Nine guesses. Yeah, it'll be. It's it's like a it's a nine square grid, and then it will be like you know th- usually a co- like two teams in each column or two teams in a column, two teams in a row. And then, um, like, like something like like won a playoff series, and then yeah. like you know uh, was second team all defense, and it's just like figuring out things that slot into all those. I'm 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 on movie grid. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what's on there today. Okay, great. Which will be fun. So I, I feel like I would be very bad at that because I forget even Celtics players from ten years ago. But so you'd be putting in Larry Bird. That those be your I, guesses. I mean, I, yeah, <laughs> if you know hoop grids, that's humiliating. Yeah. <laughs> is it deep? Is it does? It, is it like you want deep the cuts? deep cuts? Yeah, because yeah. there's also percentage, like how many other people oh. guess this, and you want to get the be- the more obscure movie yeah. grid works the same way. Here's released. Oh shit! I answered it today, so it popped up. Released from 1990 to 2010. Heath Ledger going one way. Okay. Will Smith, Julianne Moore. Oh. And then going down, it's released from 1990 to 2010. Drama is the second one, and one word title. Hmm. I mean, we don't have to play right now, but I'd rather not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you like let, let's let's since we're in the sports world, uh, I like how. I mean, we list- don't we don't have to play. Yeah, yeah we're not gonna. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We yeah, right, we, uh, right. I mean, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah we don't. Yeah, have right. yeah. How, how big of like a sporto are you? And 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 is basketball your favorite sport? Like, how do you rank them? Yes, I am definitely a big sporto. Basketball's always been my number one. Wow. I started playing Y basketball when I was like six. Wow. And wow. I played sports year round. That's the odd thing. My mom's from the north of France, and uh, my parents were teachers growing up, and uh, I'm a dual citizen. So a lot of what I present is not sporto, hmm. but I'm rabid sporto. Yeah. Wow. I played basketball in the, you know, winter, uh, baseball in the spring and summer, and soccer in the fall uh, wow. for, for basically like 10 or 12 years, through uh, a lot of it through high school. I played Amazing. sports a lot, never great at them. I, I think I excelled at baseball the most, and I quit when I was 16, but... um I remember I've said this on the podcast before, but I remember specifically uh, going to the lunchroom at North Quincy High School. But before I was in high school, yeah, when I was uh probably in like the summer after fifth grade or maybe the summer after sixth grade, uh, and I was at Raise the Curtain summer camp, a theater camp, <laughs> and then all the Fun. basketball camp kids came in. They're like, "What are you doing here?" And I was like, "Uh, like I, I didn't know what to do." I was like. Ah, uh, nothing, man. Oh, <laughs> they were picking like, on these nerds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Start decking kids. I was dressed as Curly from Oklahoma. They're like, "Are you sure?" <laughs> uh, but I, I love basketball. It's become one of my favorite sports to watch. But I was always very bad at it. I was never good at basketball. But I, I, I grew to love watching it. Maybe no. the most. Uh, well, it's up there when football's good. It's, it's up there with football. Yeah. But that Paul, those Paul Pierce. 
early Celtics years that comeback against the Nets and was was a great team. 2000 maybe to maybe 2002. Oh, so you're talking like the pre Kevin Garnett I mean, era? I, yeah. I, I, I watched. I mean, I was watching a year, like a couple of years before that, right. like when the Lakers took on Allen Iverson and the Sixers oh, sure, in the yeah. finals. Like that was that was kind of around the time I was I started to get into it more. But I love it. I'm just I'm horrible at it. You you don't hoop, Wags, right? No, not a, I'm not. Wasn't an athletic kid. I was also an asthmatic kid, so that kind of ah. limited what I could do. You know, yeah, yeah, from like, a sports standpoint, cuts into it. Yeah, but yeah, um, it's even more pathetic than I that. wasn't. Big. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I wasn't big. I was like yeah. you know freshman year of high school. I was five foot, one hundred pounds, soaking wow. wet. So I hit a growth spurt probably end of sophomore junior year. And our basketball team at school was like five thousand kids. We would go to state every other year. And I was on the soccer team, and I would have had to quit soccer to even try out for basketball. Yeah. So one summer, I did like the summer high school summer league, where there there basically like there'd be like twenty five people competing for twelve spots. And you know, the only other white guy on the team was six foot six, and uh, I still I like my chances, but I wasn't going to quit. Sure. I kind of riding the bench with a great soccer team. Yeah, yeah. It was really fun, and we were close to making it to state. It, and it was my favorite team that I ever played on. I'm like, I don't want to quit this. Right, right, right. Kind of came up with all these guys mm. playing like park district soccer and stuff. And um, yeah, I. But it, basketball was by far my best sport, and I was like a. I I, I mean I. I, I was like, a few people would be like, "Oh, he's the I'm going to pick him last, and he's just going to everyone's going to think that he sucks," and I would show up and. I was very that's cool. Very good dribbling, very fast and and very good shooter. So it sucks about getting older is like all those things kind of go away. Yeah, sure, <laughs> yeah. right. And then it's like you're asthmatic all of a sudden. Right. <laughs> I'm not trying <laughs> no, I was trying to bring it back to yeah, a place yeah, yeah. where like now I'm as bad as you <laughs> right, as a kid. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like you as a child. No, now. Right, right. You're not. No, you're I'm not, not that no, bad. I'm not you're bad. not. You're right, not that I mean, bad. I know I've yeah. never seen it, but yeah. my imagination tells me like now I'm I'm that bad. I'll get picked last when like raise the curtain stuff. They'd be like, you know, like I get picked last and I was like, I'm pretty I'm better than you think I am. You right. Know? They think I'm a big doof. And then you go out there and just fucking crush a monologue. Yeah, like, oh, man. Oklahoma. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. fucking tear it up. <laughs> Spoken word, everything's up to date in Kansas City. And we're like, wow, he's got balls. He's not even on key. He's just like talking through the song. This guy's a stud. Uh, then I quit that because I was afraid of getting made fun of in high school. That's when I quit mm. uh, and doing theater stuff. Uh, and played football and was horrible at it. But I will say, I'm sure, I'm sure you have some stories of this. Any great post practice meals you can remember? Because mm. I remember when my mom, I've told on here, but I remember after a specific football practice, like the best McDonald's I ever had. Oh, thank God. I thought you were going to say breast milk. <laughs> 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 no, dude. There's, I have way better breast milk stories. <laughs> it's not even top 10. Uh, you had a good McDonald's in your town? I, 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 I it, it was just, I do have a good McDonald's. We have the, I have the, uh, what is what is it? What is that McDonald's? The one from the memes? It's the the you know what I'm saying? The, I don't know what you mean. It's the architecture. It's that you know what I'm saying? Oh, the brutalist McDonald's. Yeah, I have yes, a, the yes, brutalist yes. McDonald's that they use in the memes <laughs> is from is from Quincy. Really? And it is a good. It is a it, that is actually a pretty great McDonald's because there, there is a difference. Like a manager of a of a chain like that makes a difference. There oh, were, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was more of a Burger King guy growing up because the McDonald's in our hometown weren't awesome. Yeah, sure. But there was one Burger King really like that. You're always Always satisfied. I I I I was uh, they had the saddest fries too. If I don't know if you remember, mm. uh, and I don't know if you care either. But the, <laughs> I think it was important to point out. Uh, oh yeah, it's a good point. The uh, saddest fries kind of ironically sucked, didn't they? Weren't they bad? They tr they took a few different goes at re remaking their fries, and they never really. Uh... The show's bad. Sorry. I just... <laughs> Why you point it out? <laughs> <laughs> you know about the saddest fries, right? Anyway, they sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, for me, Burger King was that was my other that uh, maybe more so the McDonald's at one point that was huge mm. for me because it was also walking distance from my house. So yeah, my friends and I would walk there. We like hung out like in a bank parking lot near there. You know what I mean? It was that was that was the spot. There's so many factors because it's like to your point. Yes, it, 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 is this individual franchise like a well run, a well executed version? Uh, and then also, yeah, proximity also factors into it. But I think there's also like a weird like 
familial hierarchy that just comes from like your parents deciding which are the good ones and which are the bad. Like, yeah. I, like we always like thought Wendy's was like too fancy, weirdly, <laughs> which insane. is it's as weird. So we just like never got it. But so when I could get it on my own, I was like, oh wow, Wendy's okay. You Did know? yours have the salad taco bar? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was, which is fancy. That was, yes. fancy yeah. that was like the biggest hack in fast food for a while. 100%. Yeah. Go there and just build tacos. Like I do this at home. It's not necessarily worse than what we make at home. Yeah. You know? I, honestly, I think I'm kind of on, on the level of it. I, 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 the Wendy's, that Wendy's to me is like was the best chain that there oh, was. Oh, yeah. It that was level. When it was really like hitting. And now I feel like Wendy's is like, you know. It's dropped off yeah, quite it's, a bit. It's fallen off a little bit. Poor Dave Thomas. Yeah. He's dead, first of all. The, the worst insult. Yeah. But we're, we were talking about revenge on your deathbed maybe yeah. before we started the podcast. It was slightly That's before right. we started. Yeah, it started yeah. before we were recording. But that seems like Dave Thomas was like, I curse the rest of this franchise history. <laughs> From his deathbed, he's like, <laughs> like none shall be like, none, none shall be good again. <laughs> And one last thing, make my daughter really hot in the commercials from here on out. <laughs> All right, sure thing, sir. John, big John. <laughs> Dave, Jesus Christ, man. Such a family guy yeah. before that. Yeah. We're recording this. <laughs> Stop acting it out. He's like, oh, my daughter. Oh, I wish I'd had a daughter like this. <laughs> now you got to put that on your tombstone <laughs> with the hand gesture. <laughs> We're gonna remake the stone so your hands are doing this. <laughs> it's a top shot. Yeah, yeah. It's a top <laughs> shot on this thing. It's just going. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, wish granted, because she was hot. The, the hot yeah, Wendy's yeah, yeah. girl. Oh my goodness. Very fetching. Yeah. I would. I would. I, you know. Uh, wouldn't that be perfect to, for me to marry the Wendy's girl? I think it would have been great. It'd, it'd been be, a match made in heaven, I feel like. It'd be great synergy for the Doughboys. Yeah, yeah. People would be like, Grimace and the Wendy's Curl and Herring. So, okay, so what are your favorite, like, because, uh, you know, uh, BK a go-to as, as a kid, but, like, what are your favorite chains? Like, do you have any go-tos from either a fast food or a sit-down standpoint? Um, there's, uh, like, it can be anywhere? Anywhere, yeah. Okay, in my hometown, uh, Joliet, Illinois, there's, there's a couple, I don't know if, I don't know how, I've never looked up, like, how many of these there are but in my hometown there's like at least three of them and it's called el burrito loco okay and uh uh it's it's just great it's so simple everything feels clean you never get sick after it right that's the big thing that's, yeah that's huge you know if you're not getting sick after a certain fast food that's kind of, that's rare right i think yeah it's if we're, we 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 talk about this because this doesn't a lot of the times it doesn't scratch it maybe even today it doesn't scratch the itch of mm. We're eating at a restaurant that we're like splurging and actually enjoying fast food or whatever. And I think a lot of the times when we we eat at a bad place like that, it is like I also feel like shit. So it's like you're eating something you don't like and you feel like shit is, right. the, is the worst combo. And of then course. you're going into a, another low T recording of your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you're fighting off diarrhea and sweating through an hour. I think every recording of our <laughs> podcast is low T, but I think that <laughs> weren't we gonna t weren't we gonna test our T on one episode? Yeah, we just never got around to it. <laughs> never got around to I it. I still think that's a good Patreon episode. Um, El Burrito Loco is God. You know what's gonna suck so is much it? is when the fucking everyone in the, in the Discord, everyone in our Reddit is gonna just have a higher T than us. <laughs> when we're the lowest, we don't have to test them too. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's mostly like that corridor, Southwest Chicago land corridor. Looks like. Got is it, it old yeah. would Jake and L would be able to eat at it? Was is that Great is, question. is it that old? Uh no, it's not that old. Damn. No, they, they they died they died long before this chain started. <laughs> um fact, the Blues in, Brothers are dead. Yeah. In fact, I think the money guys behind El Burrito Loco were like, they're dead. Let's let's move. Let's move. Let's move now with this plan. <laughs> um yeah, that and and also there was a Dairy Queen in my hometown where all like I had a friend working there. At, at any given time for eight years. So I wow. basically got free Dairy Queen for eight solid years through that high rules. school and into my early 20s. That, that rules. And that, that, you know, you can't, I mean, you can't turn down free stuff. Are you just doing the desserts there? Are you doing the savory menu too? Some savory stuff, yeah. but I, yeah, I would usually find myself getting shakes. And what's your, what's like your go-to, like a blizzard? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, peanut butter cup blizzard. Oh, that's a great, great but, call. But then also like, um, I feel like they had some like 
like hyper vanilla, you know, marshmallow fluff type shake. Oh yeah. That just kind of really makes Blows you your feel socks off. Yeah. Huh. Which if you just want like a concentrated dose of that right. flavor. I I feel like I'm I'm sad that there's not more because we had a we had a travel just to get to uh Dairy Freeze, right? Wasn't it? Wasn't Dairy it? Queen, yeah. There, there's oh, a there's a Foster's Dairy Freeze, Freeze is in a Los Quincy Angeles. Local spot. Jesus. Yeah. Which there's you've a, seen before. I have seen the Dairy uh, Freeze. Uh, mm-hmm. uh is that the one that a gas station? Is a gas station across the street. Right, yeah, right, yeah. right. Um I took you to Brigham's. Wait, I think why we we almost stopped at Dairy Freeze and we didn't. Why didn't we stop there? I don't know. I probably had to show you like my dad's school or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> There's an important thing on the stop that you had to say. I don't know why we didn't do I, You did try Brigham's before, before it closed. Yeah, I did. Initially. I had a good time at Brigham's. It's great. Uh, the, yeah, the Dairy Queen, there aren't any, I think the closest one in, in in the LA area is in Arcadia. I think you have to go out to the Arcadia Mall. Really? There weirdly aren't a lot around here, but there were when I, I was a kid. I mean, I grew up in, in Lakewood, Long Beach, California. There were Dairy Queens. Like you could go to, I went to them regularly. I want them like how the Foster's Freeze is set up. You know what I mean? Like the standalone sh- shacks. I'm sad that there's not more of those because- we, yeah, so the you go and get a hot dog a and fries too. in a basket or something, and and then a cone afterwards. That would be great. There it's used just... to be a Santa Monica Foster's Freeze, and it permanently closed. But it was one of those like, oh, this is like it was the old school like stand sort of thing, and you could get like you know the, all the grill favorites. Dairy and Queen at its peak treats. was better than Foster's Freeze, right? I think so, probably. Yeah. But you know, Foster's Freeze is no slouch in terms yeah. of what they were doing. Like I like that concept. I like like hey, we got we got burgers and dogs and fries and sweet treats. Like that's mm-hmm. what we do. I think that's like a fun, you know, a, a chain restaurant. I mean, that's what Shake Shack's trying to do. Yeah, there's one in uh in Atwater, stuff a Foster's Freeze. That's right. Yeah, we went to that one. It's not bad. It's not bad. Oh yeah, before San Fernando, right? Yeah, and I think that I think yes, yeah, and I think it is where uh isn't it isn't it in on, Pulp Fiction? It's on Fletcher. Uh, yeah, it's on Fletcher. Yes. right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it? Is that? Is it? Is that the one that's from Pulp? Right? Isn't Pulp Fiction? Isn't Pulp Fiction? It is. It is. Yeah. It, thank you, Casey. <laughs> I knew Casey would know. Wait, what scene? Uh, it's when uh, Bruce Willis hits Marcellus Wallace with the car. Oh, okay. It's right Got outside it. the Atwater. Um, if you had said the version. Gimp scene, there would have been a cloud <laughs> where Weiger once sat, <laughs> <laughs> gag ball in your mouth, driving down there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's let's talk about salads a little bit because this is a, yeah, when a we- salad spot. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. No, go on. Say it. <laughs> say it. Say it. When Weiger, when you were talking about like playing ball, Weiger was like, that's what was in his head. <laughs> <laughs> a ball gag. Gag <laughs> fuck. <laughs> gag. Yeah. Oh, like drooling down. He's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. Since yeah, you yeah, six? <laughs> oh, yeah. Me as a six year old. Oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, we're talking about a salad place today. I'm curious before we get into that. Do you like the idea of because I feel like it's a thing that that a lot of adults default to, but it's not out of any sort of fun. It's just because like, well, th- I got to eat something, and this isn't going to make me feel like shit, and yeah. this is nutritious. Like the idea of a salad is a meal. Like how often is that a go to for you? Um, maybe a couple times a week. Yeah. I have a hard time doing it for dinner. Yeah, that me feels too. unsatisfying. And for lunch, I got to talk myself into it. Breakfast, non-starter. It's not happening. Sure. So it's a it's a few times a week for lunch. And, and it really has to be one of those things where I feel so bad that I think it's going to help me reset. Right. Um, yeah. Do you have but a go-to I, spot or do you make it on your own? What do you do? What's your routine? Uh, uh, I probably make it on my own. My, my wife, Lily, ha- she yeah. makes a really good one. She makes several different ones. She makes a really good kale salad. Oh, wow. Um, and then, yeah. And I, I make good like vinaigrettes or dressings, hey, I there guess. There you go. So there's that. Oh, and this is funny too. My cousin in France, he owns, I believe, two franchises of a fast salad place. Whoa. Wow. And it's called, it's way more ridiculous in French. It's called Eat Salad. Wow. But in French, obviously, it's Eat Salad. Right. That's how people, people are like, oh, what? Right, you go Eat Salad? Wow. Oh, on prend Eat Salad? Oh, ouais, eat Salad. And I, that blows my mind that people don't stop and be like, mm, the name is Eat Salad. <laughs> right, right. You know, like to them, it doesn't sound weird. Yeah. Whereas if a place here was called Eat Salad, you'd be like, "Fuck off! Don't tell me what to do." <laughs> <laughs> but he's crushing it. Wow. Is he? Is he? Good is he? Him. Did he grow up in France? Is he? Uh... Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Um, that's cool. And he's very. Uh, also, another thing, I played college basketball in France. Did you really? I oh. did. Yeah. Damn, you were. I, you were I went away good. for a semester, and I was at this political science institute that was like part of like, uh, like. 
I guess like a division or conference of like poli sci schools. And um, I, I went there from January to, to June for the second semester. And I was walking through the hall like the first week of school. And I saw something that was like, try out for the basketball team. I guess they'd had some international people leave after the first semester and they needed they needed warm bodies. <laughs> and I showed up and like halfway through practice, they were like, okay, so you're, you're a starting point guard. You're, you're like, you're starting. Wow. <laughs> wow. Holy shit. And That's fucking wild. It was, it was so fun. It was like D5. Yeah, you know, sure. It was not. Weiger was uh was on the uh, college ball gag team. <laughs> <laughs> you guys traveled, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went on the road a little bit. Um, All I'm, American. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the eat salad menu and like I, wow. I mean, this stuff. Uh, just these screenshots I'm looking at. This definitely looks like a better quality than what we had today. We got, we got, a, we got a tuna niçoise on there, Wags. I, I can't bring up the I'm, I haven't found the specific menu yet. I'm just looking at some screenshots and some menu items. You know, it's not I don't speak French, so it's a little bit tougher for me to navigate the page. Um, but uh, but yeah, good for him. I, that's I'm, wild. I'm, I'm proud of him. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's great. awesome. He's a good guy. I I like. He, here's the thing. I find myself eating salad as a meal. I would honestly say it might be like four to six times a week. Like, wow. I'm like pretty, I try to do four pretty regularly times. doing I mean, it. But that's also partly, Mitch, because of what we're doing to our bodies yeah. for the podcast and then also just because we both like to eat shitty food. And so, so often it's the yo-yo of like, I just had a fucking trashy meal, like you were saying, and I got to have something better to balance this out. A lot of the times it's me eating an 800 calorie sweet green salad or something That's true too, too yeah. But, you know. It's not the most healthy thing in the world, but it's healthier than like, you know, getting a pastrami Reuben, you yeah. know? Right. So it's not like, it's not about like balance as a whole. It's about like, I got to... I, I, I got to like tip the scales in the other direction. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I, yeah. I mean, I feel the same way, but are you counting? Is it like, are you counting salad if it's just the meal? Like the meal is just a salad or if there's salad to the side? I'm specifically thinking of like, Hey, I'm gonna have a big bowl of like the salad is the main thing. I'm not thinking of like, Hey, I've got like, you know, a, a, a BLT and some salad, some greens on the side or something like that, okay. or, or an omelet and some greens on the side. Like that to me is a, a different thing. Oh, I'll, I'll do that pretty regularly too. But wow. you know. so you're getting a lot of salad. I'm getting a lot of greens. Yeah. No, I eat a lot of green vegetables. Yeah. I mean, I should be in better shape, but I mean, you know, whatever. Yeah, I, I'm. 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 I'm eating. I, I probably like. Yeah, four to four to four to five times a week at least. I try. I'm trying to eat, whether it's for lunch or yeah. dinner. I'm trying to eat them. Do you know about this thirty points thing? No. Oh, what's that? Talking about sports. <laughs> uh, sports <laughs> use points. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, so it's about getting per week. I think you have to get thirty points from this basically long list of fruits and vegetables and nuts and and grains yeah. and things. Mm. And then everything has like point values. So like nuts would probably have a quarter of a point. Um, you know, maybe romaine lettuce will be a half point. But then of any vegetable or fruit will probably be one point. And the idea is that if you average four or five of those points a day, then you get to 30 points for the week. And that's supposed to like help you balance wow. your, your diet. Oh, I like that. And, you know. Like in basketball, thirty points is like wow, you're an all star for sure. Yeah. Maybe even all NBA. No, yeah, that's that's, that's you average thirty points. Tatum's basically yeah, averaging right now. Yeah, Donovan Mitchell's up there too right now. Who? Donovan Mitchell. Oh uh, yeah, but Tatum. like your name. It is. It's half of my name. It is. I mean, it's the two. Wait, two thirds of my name. That's your right. Middle name's Donovan. My 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 middle name is Michael. I'm Michael Donovan Mitchell. <laughs> and then uh and uh, uh Edward though too. My confirmation name. Oh, nice. Oh, I didn't realize you factored that in. Mm -hmm. You have a confirmation name? Uh, I don't, no. I, I, I mean, it was Episcopalian, but we, it wasn't confirmed. Mm -hmm. You got one? You got yeah, one? Yeah. It's Bruno. Really? That's great. That's yeah. good. Named after my mom's brother. That's cool. Wow, that's that's Edward cool. is my, my mom's dad, my grandpa. I don't know wow. why I said mom's dad. Is the idea there, it's, it's kind of like- He technically is my mom's dad, but my grandpa. It's kind of like a, like a pope- Thing where it's just like you get a new name that's like a religious name. Is that the idea behind it? Yeah. Okay. Who would you have, who would you choose? It's got to be a saint. That's the oh, thing. it's got to be a saint. Oh yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Um, Jared. <laughs> saint Jared. He was sainted later, weirdly, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, the Catholic Church was like, we approve of this. <laughs> Endorse this guy. Um, yeah, plus, he eats well. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's your boy, the Spoon Man, and I want to talk to you about today's sponsor, Helix Sleep. 
You know them. You love them. I love them. I've had my Helix mattress now for what? Seven years? I don't know. Time keeps on slipping, slipping away. And I keep on sleeping away on top of my very comfortable Helix mattress. That's right. I love my Helix mattress. My cats love my Helix mattress, Wally and Irma. They sleep on it very comfortably. I'm right here in my Quincy ba basement right now. I'm I'm away from my Helix mattress, which makes me sad. I'm getting back to it soon. And you know what? Wally and Irma just sleeping away on that thing. They love it. They love that mattress. Mike has got one. I've recommended you a bunch of people. Everybody loves a Helix sleep mattress. It's the best. And it's because the Helix lineup offers 20 unique mattresses, including the award-winning Lux collection, which I have, the newly released Helix Elite collection, which I don't have, and I'm kind of jealous, a mattress designed for big and tall sleepers, which I don't need, and even a mattress made just for kids. So how will you know which Helix mattress works best for you and your body? Well, you take the Helix sleep quiz and find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. Just two minutes. And your personalized mattress is shipped right to your door, straight to your door, free of charge. Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home. That's why they offer a 100-night trial and a 10- to 15-year warranty to try out your new Helix mattress. Everybody is unique, and everyone sleeps differently. That's why Helix has se several different mattress models to choose from, each designed for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. Models with memory foam layers to provide optimal pressure relief if you sleep on your side. Models with more responsive foam to create your body for essential support and stomach and back sleeping positions. Enhanced cooling features to keep you from overheating at night. And if your spine needs some extra TLC, they got you. Every Helix mattress has a hybrid design combining individually wrapped steel coils in the base with premium foam layers on top. It's the perfect combination of comfort and support. I took the Helix Sleep Quiz and I was matched with the Moonlight Lux mattress because I wanted something that felt like a cloud. I wanted, I wanted something that felt soft and, and nice. And that's what I got with my Moonlight Lux. Not only is the mattress the best I have slept on, but the setup was fast and easy. Helix mattresses are delivered in a box and straight to your door for free. Again, shout out Ross Kimball helping me set that up. Plus, Helix mattresses are American made and their very own factory and come with a 10 or 15 year warranty, depending on the model. Don't want to take my word for it. Helix has been awarded the number one mattress picked by GQ and Wired Magazine, and they have over 12,000 five-star reviews. And right now, Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Just go to helixsleep.com slash doughboys and use code HELIXPARTNER20. That's HELIXPARTNER20. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix... Better sleep starts now. Do it. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, going into 2024, I want to think the opposite of New Year, New You, and think about just continuing to crush it in the things that were working for me in 2023. Around New Year's, we get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right. Maybe you finally are organized one part of your space and you want to tackle another. Or maybe you're taking your supplements every morning and now you actually want to eat breakfast too. Therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. Me, I've benefited from therapy myself. It's been huge for me from a mental, emotional, even physical standpoint. And it's helped a lot of people I love as well. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself, and it isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com Doughboys today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Doughboys. Let's talk about Chop Stop. Chop Stop was founded in 2010 in Burbank, California. You know, I've gotten mm. conflicting info here. I've seen 2010, I've seen 2011, I've seen 2012 in different sources. Wow. Uh, I, I, so I don't know exactly what the truth is, but it's, it's the, it's, it's been around for you know 10 to 12 years, somewhere in that range. Uh, Mark Kolkis, who is the founder, specifically targeted a chopped salad chain. Like he was not just like, I don't want to make a salad chain. I want a chopped salad chain. You can't get good chopped salads anywhere. Um, so that's that's his specific. Uh, quirk he wanted to uh, is, is fetish, if you will. Um, there are 21 locations, mostly in SoCal, though there are a few in NorCal and Nevada. <laughs> 
And there's another chain, Just Salad, which is basically the same concept. And I was thinking, it's like, like, oh yeah, this is. I thought this place was Just Salad at first when we were going to review it, and I was mm-hmm. like, oh no, wait, Chop Stop is something different. I've had both. Um, but here's here's, I think, and we'll get to this. But I think this is a microcosm for the issues with Chop Stop. On their homepage right now is an ad that I screen cap that says, Say cheese. It's so much easier than saying quesadilla. Introducing quesadillas. <laughs> Why are they introducing quesadillas? Pretty good. I, I had no problem with the ad. I thought the ad was pretty good. The ad's not bad, but it's also like, why is this place doing this? Say and that's cheese. kind of what I thought about a lot of their Can menu. you say it again? Say cheese. Say cheese. It's so much easier than saying quesadilla. Introducing quesadillas. Maybe they didn't need introducing quesadillas after that. I don't know. Well, I don't know. They're introducing it to their menu. Yes, they're they're yeah. not claiming to have invented quesadillas. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I guess, can well, there's, there's a couple things here. One- Chopped up salads are not great. This okay. So when I read about this guy, who wants stuff finely chopped up? He, so Mark, this guy Colchis specifically loves that. Like he's like he's like I want a salad to be chopped so you can taste all the different ingredients in one bite. Like that's like his thing that he likes. And it's his Colchis particular sounds taste. like a guy we'd make up on the show. <laughs> <laughs> not saying that we've ever made anyone up ever. No, we wouldn't do that. <laughs> Colchis sounds like a weird dude. He was funding my web series for a little while. <laughs> yeah. And then well, he, he ba- through Chop through yeah. Chop Shop. He backed out. <laughs> this would be like, you know, 2014. It was oh, kind of the yeah. end where people are like, don't do a web series. Yeah. yeah. Definitely don't do a dramatic web series. <laughs> right, right. But Colchis was like, no. I, I, he was taking jokes out of the script, which was really frustrating. Yeah, because like, like, hey, it's great that you're giving us the financial support because his family like bred thoroughbreds. Like that's his whole thing. It's like a horse, you know, it's a horse breeding family. And so he mm-hmm. has a lot of money from that. Colchis Farms. Colchis Farms, yeah. yeah. And so you like you like that he's giving you the financial support, but you what you want ideally is the financial support, but then the creative freedom, you mm-hmm. know? You hope that's that he's kind of act, acting yeah. as a benefactor. Instead, he's like, I want to be a collaborator. He's very hands-on. And he forced us to write in Google Docs so that he could see every change that was made. Right. That's and right. then he'd come out and he'd either put a comment on it or he'd mm-hmm. just like revert. That's I I, I heard a prick move. Yeah, really a prick weird. Move. Yeah. <laughs> just to revert it. I've heard that uh I heard that he tried to buy the home alone library because Culk is he hates Culk in. It's too he says too close. When someone says Culk in, he was yeah. says too close. Right. Like, what does he mean? It's like I think the name is too close to his name. But he only su- he bought Home Alone three, and nobody gave a shit. <laughs> no one gave a shit. No one gave a shit. <laughs> You're like, you bought the one without Culkin in it, Culkis, You fucking idiot. And he was like, well, that was the one that was affordable. It's like, yeah, no shit. That's the one that was. Yeah. affordable. No one, no one cares about that one. And then, it, it, and, and, and on the top of Home Alone three, it says a Culkis production. But like, well, this is the kind of guy that we're dealing with. <laughs> this is who we're dealing with, and this is the Chop Stop guy. <laughs> So who wants to eat chopped up salads? Who wants Colchis, that? Colchis does apparently. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that I haven't because people get mad at me, but like chopped salads actually pretty good sometimes. I'm like, yeah, I know, I get that. It is good sometimes, but I, but I not, I don't like to. It's like mushing. It's like it's mush. Yes, it's good. It is good. I think the key there, it is good sometimes. This yeah. entire concept, this entire restaurant, is built around chopped salads. Is that enough to sustain? A chain. I mean, we're 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 finding out in real time. But I, I will say that I, I've had this place before. Uh, I and I felt it was fine. I just got a salad from there, and in, in, in my memory, um, I certainly did not mess around with some of the the other menu items that we'll talk about today. Uh, but I went. Uh, but the the thing that I thought succeeded the most there, in, in my experience, I got the Viva Mexico chop, which is romaine roasted chicken, cheddar tomato, black beans, fresh jalapenos, tortilla strips, and a creamy chipotle dressing, and Presentation, very nice. I will say the way the stuff is laid out in the bowl, it's just like all the different components are sort of set aside. The bowl ha- gives enough room for mixing, which is a huge thing for me. I feel like a lot of times these salad places, if you have to mix your own dressing, it's like a little bit of a mess. I just think in the history of anyone saying Viva Mexico, yeah. yours was the dorkiest ever said. <laughs> I got the Viva Mexico chopped. I don't think anyone's ever said that phrase as dorky as you. I'm sorry. It it's sounded right. like someone had ADR'd Viva Mexico in while you were saying your sentence. <laughs> yeah, but good presentation. Yeah. Good craftsmanship. It yeah. looked good. I saw yeah. it before you cracked it open. It did look good. Mm-hmm. And I think that dressing was, yeah, there was an ample amount in that little cup. And I think it was, uh, you know, I think the, the different components worked together. I like the fresh jalapenos. They weren't too 
prominent, but it was nice to have them there because I'm a bit of a heat seeker. And like having that spice, I thought was just like, you know, just 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 gave it a little bit of 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 extra flavor. Uh, I, this was like a totally fine lunch. And, and if we if I'd stopped at the Viva Mexico Chop, uh, I would be like, <laughs> okay, I'm I'm set. I'm all square here. Like this place is fine. But then we get into the other menu items. I'm just gonna say something. Yeah, I get why you were so distracted by Jemmy. <laughs> <laughs> Jemmy the dog. So yeah, you, Jemmy Tim the dog and I are both is, kind of distracted by Jemmy. She just she's just kind of a a, a constant you know watchful presence. Mm. Um, <laughs> she doesn't really emote or uh, certainly doesn't vocalize. Which again, what we said a is a great drop. representation of someone listening to the podcast. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is most listeners in a car right now are just doing the Jemmy, <laughs> <laughs> just on a treadmill, just like. <laughs> Is there something that could help me pass the time unemotionally? <laughs> <laughs> a completely neutral look on my face. Literally a robot recharging. <laughs> no, now it's like uh, there's a crying baby parents will put on like white like white noise machine or the Doughboys podcast. Either one of them, I think, does the same. <laughs> oh my God, Chop Stop episode with Tim Balls? Oh my God, yes, absolutely. Kid is gonna, <laughs> kid's gonna think they're floating in space with this thing. <laughs> uh, very sweet, and we've made some lovely eye contact. A, a bit forced, not not my decision. She she's very she's very she is a very sweet dog. She's yeah. a very she's a real she's sweetie. Real. She's she's very very cute. Uh, this was this to me, I I got the I got the the Chapanini. Right. Me too. Yes. So the Chapanini is like there. First off, and this is this was your observation. The portmanteau makes you think you're going to get like a sandwich. Yeah. It's not a sandwich. Yeah. It is panini pressed, but that is even more. It's, it's just confusing. a press burrito. It's a press burrito. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so the which Chapanini did you get? I got the chicken Caesar chop, or this, maybe it's just called the Caesar Chapanini. The Caesar Chapanini is roasted chicken, hard boiled egg, shaved Parmesan, tomato, celery, romaine, and Caesar sauce. And which one did you get? Uh, I believe the Tex Mex. Tex Mex is the is avocado roasted chicken, pepper jack, roasted corn, black beans, romaine, and cilantro they lime list, sauce. And the third one that they, we they got. They have it listed as Caesar sauce. Caesar sauce is what I they call it. I don't think I've ever heard, and uh, 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 I've never heard, uh, I've never heard anyone call Caesar dressing Caesar sauce. I don't know why they don't just call it Caesar dressing, but they they insist on calling it sauces. They as they they called my dressing the chipotle sauce. Mm. Uh, the the chop the Greek chopanini is the third one we uh, we got, and I got that one just to take a uh, some bites of and share. Uh, this is feta crumbles, uh, garbanzo beans, red onions, tomato, bell pepper, romaine, and Caesar sauce. So they're all kind of just like the same components in different configurations. Some of them are wrapped in a tortilla and grilled. Some of them are just in a bowl. I, I bit into mine and I thought it was the Greek one. Right. Yeah, and if you bit into mine, you could have thought it was the Greek one too, honestly. I think the little chunks of chicken with the Caesar one help a little bit, but they're all pretty... It's very wet, mushy food. It's like, to me, it's like, look, to, to like an assisted living home or something, I don't want to say that. I hope that there's better food there. You did say it. I did say it. I was like, Puh, this tastes like assisted living home food. Right. Um, I screamed that out loud. Yeah. Uh, my grandma was in assisted living for a while, but like, it's that sort of thing where I'm like, this is like soggy and easy to eat or something. And it's like depressing in the way that it feels like I'm close to death. Mm. I guess I, there's no better way to put it. Like, it, like it just is like, I could, I, I, I could see this is this, there's something inherently depressing about this meal. Yeah. It, the when um when Doc in uh, Back to the Future is taking the garbage and dumping it into the car for mm. fuel. Oh yeah, it felt like that wet kind of garbage, but <laughs> in a wrap. <laughs> It was way too much dressing. It really was uh, was heavily dressed, soaking, and soaking wet. It's so much. They're dressing. they're all they're all wet. Yeah, you're eating like a wet log. That's like like you said, is it's a burrito that's been pressed, not a panini. I, first of all, I don't think it would work in a panini because I think it all just spill out. No, absolutely not work in a panini. It makes sense that it's a wrap. It's just yeah. a confusing name. Which and then then I'm I'm sure you're about to point this out. Sorry if I'm jumping the gun, but no, please. Then they also have what they call a chaparito. Yes. Which is the yes. same ingredients without the wrap in a burrito bowl. So there's no even more, more confusing. It's so much more confusing. You, you, you tell someone like I could, they had to have focus tested this of like, hey, what do you do? You think a chopperito? Do you, what do you think that? What are you thinking of? They would describe what you, the chopinini is because mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that's what it sounds like. But no, the chopperito is a bowl yeah. with rice instead of just instead of greens. Fucking what's his name? Colchis. Colchis. Fucking Colchis, man. 
No one. I don't think people like this idea enough. Here's Colkis told me he was going to build a roller coaster. Did he? Did you guys get on this <laughs> this email? He FaceTimed me to he tell me. He FaceTimed you about this. Yeah. Yeah. We're like, like, oh, like you're investing in an amusement park. It's like, no, I'm just going to build like it's a standalone coaster. And it, the whole the whole idea of the coaster was it was like an anti vax coaster. Yeah. So it's like you're about to get the shot, and then there's the drop. So you miss, like you don't. You don't get, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's a, it's, it was something about shedding the virus or yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Right. And, you know, he's no, it's not a surprise. He, he leads with his views. Yes. Yeah. 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 He's very, it's right out there. Yeah. Very politically forward CEO. <laughs> <laughs> he's an activist CEO. <laughs> it would be funny. This guy's very liberal, pro, pro. I mean, Look, his food is just maybe not that good is the issue here. Or or it's for someone who like him yeah. is like chop salad in every configuration you can think of. Yes. But the but but here's the thing. And and I think this is this is we all had the same feeling here. Mm-hmm. The overdressed chopanini, the overdressed wrap with is <sighs> confusing because like that it needed rice the bowls had rice yeah, so it why does it something have, it more need sub- something to keep it solidified yeah a little bit more substantive in there or just less like moisture because there was like like for for instance the one i got the greek chapanini which had the feta uh and the caesar sauce it like the feta is already giving it a little bit of moisture i mean you got some other elements in there like some other wet ingredients like tomato and bell pepper it's not like a, a complete dry guy in there it's yeah. and but it was just like a, a like a bath worth of liquid like it was just it I, I described it as just like it was like you know it was like cold soup inside of a wrap and it yeah. was really an appetizer yeah i said mine looked like an italian wedding soup right in a wrap <laughs> yeah it was it looked awful like you also described at the end when you had yours all rolled up as the diaper of your the end of your meal which was very accurate it did look like yes, a diaper it yeah. did look like a stork diaper with like a child inside of it. <laughs> I, I bit in just to describe the flavor. When I bit into that cheap the the Greek chopanini. Did I have something hanging out of my nose the whole time? I just took something away from my nose. Don't show it on the camera. <laughs> you looked fine to me. Yeah, you looked we, fine. They would have the Casey and Emma would have said something. What a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> People will be able to find it. They're gonna find it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you called it out. Can we blur my face for most of this? <laughs> for every episode, don't worry. <laughs> oh man, Mike, I'm sorry he has to see that. <laughs> you needed a like you you're right. You needed a some spongy thing to soak up the liquid because yeah. it's it's insanely wet. Mm-hmm. It's like uh if you're when we were I think before the podcast we were also talking about how Deucin had recommended you get a ball gag that is mostly sponge, <laughs> right? It sucks up more of the, the drool. Yeah. <laughs> And oh, yeah. Deucin was on the ball gag team with you in college, right? Isn't that how you that's guys how first met? met? Yeah, that's yeah. how we first connected. He was not. He was always nice back then. Couldn't tell. Yeah, couldn't. I honestly couldn't tell. Couldn't so tell. Yeah, I couldn't talk. You told me that though. The 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 first, the first ball gag <laughs> tournament you guys had. Yeah, that you went to the locker room and the ball gag was in Deucin's ass, and you're like, "What the fuck are you doing, man? You yeah. put it in your mouth. It's a ball gag." And he was like. <laughs> He, I, I, I still don't know if he was like doing like a like a bit. That's all yeah. things. Like you don't know if he's doing a bit or if yeah. he's just like like dumb yeah. or like being mean. It's one of those things. I feel like I ought to myself. Can ball gags go in your ass? Is that is that am I wrong there? <laughs> can they? They can. Yeah. Can they? They can. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I saw Deucin do it, so they can. Yeah, okay, you know, I know. I know you saw Deucin. I know that part wrapped around is the real. front of him like a jock strap. Yeah, like all right, he had it all, all right, hooked good. up. All right, good. Okay, so okay. I saw it in practice. But normally they go in your mouth. Normally right? they go okay, in your mouth. All right, yeah. All right, all right, good, 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 yeah, good, good, yeah. good, good. No, he was just like, I'm. He, he had that on. He was like, he, he said, I'm ready for my close up. And we said, what? <laughs> we were just all confused. Also, he was facing you, he so it's just facing us. it's just dick and balls. Dick out, and balls were out, and him and you'd be like, "What are you? No, we're about to go into the competition." Yeah, right, right. <laughs> then he turned around, and Mike, you know, it's interesting. For as much as you know about ball gags, you also shockingly know so little about ball. Yeah. Gags. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they can go in your ass. Like, come on, man. <laughs> they can go. In your, it seems like that was a dumb question. They can, I, they can, just about anything can. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, the entire the strap could go in your ass. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm sorry, I I, I I lost my mind a little bit there. Uh, but you guys so won that tournament anyway. We right? won, yeah, <laughs> despite yeah. Doofsons. No, yeah, <laughs> took took home the gold. So the the talking about the great the great Chapanini, my first bite into that was it was 
putrid. That mm. it tasted so bad. I think I bit into it and I was just like, oh, this sucks. It it was really wretched. And if I'd ordered this for my lunch, thinking like, hey, you know what? I'll have a wrap and I'll have a I'll have a Greek wrap. That seems like a thing they can't mess up. And this will be kind of a healthy lunch, lighter lunch. And I'd be pot committed to this thing. I'd be like, this, I can't believe I wasted like eleven dollars on this. Cause it, it just tasted mm. it, it 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 tasted rotten. Yeah, it's and also another thing too, just it's it's such a fucked up thing. Uh, it detracts from the great Italian uh, leader Roberto uh, Chapanini. It just takes away from his name. Uh, <laughs> right. He the was, legacy he, of Chapanini. The regular, yeah. The legacy of Chapanini. It's coming was, after you know the fascist regime of yeah. World War II. He really brought the country. You know, helped mm-hmm. liberalize it into yeah. a modern democracy. Mussolini and then Chapanini. Chapanini was the guy who kind of brought, and, yeah, right, yeah. brought the brought the there are monuments back. to him. He there. did give Berlusconi a start, so he is a problematic <laughs> did, figure yeah. later in his life. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. But he, but still, I mean, you're gonna name the Chapanini burrito after him. That sucks. I don't know if do you think Culcus even knows about him. That's a great point. Wow. Yeah. He just uh, thought he came up with Japanese. Yeah. Study up on Italian leaders. <laughs> <laughs> uh and then you dare you you dare put a Greek salad in a chapanini? <laughs> I mean, you're gonna start a war. <laughs> Yeah. I don't think there's a single is there a single Italian. I guess the Caesar salad is the is that's the that's the that's the one, right? I'm not it's, even sure how Italian a Caesar salad is. Mm. I feel like that's a, isn't that a, a, a didn't that originate in America? I don't know. Um, e- either way, like all that aside, this feels like a thing you shouldn't have been able to mess up, and it tasted to me this one in particular. I'm not sure how yours tasted. And I want to get those assessments. Mine tasted disgusting. Like it was one of the mm. worst things I've eaten for the podcast in a while. That's interesting because uh, mine actually tasted like dog shit too. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> they were bad. <laughs> they were bad. I didn't finish it, and I was starving. I mean, yeah. we did try some other stuff. There, I got a pretzel. Uh, we all took a bite of the pretzel. The pre- Again, like the quesadilla, why are they doing this? Why, are they why do they have the pretzel? a pretzel? I don't really get it, I guess. It but. wasn't, yeah. The pre- the pretzel felt like, I think one of you said, like a hot dog bun that had been pressed together. But it yeah. also, it didn't feel cooked. Like the way that I pulled it apart, yeah. it felt like someone had just held their hands on the hot dog bun yeah. and kind of like twisted it a little bit. It felt, yeah, yeah it felt like it had been held by sweaty hands. Which maybe it had been. <laughs> Maybe maybe that was part of the joke. I said it. <laughs> yeah, it felt like yeah. Instead, you're saying instead of being cooked, it just felt like it was wrung out. It had been by, held, right. yeah, for a long time into place. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was bad. I mean, it was to me. I was almost liked it because I was like, this is just bread. At least I'm just getting like salty bread. But uh, then the quesadilla also wasn't. Good and again, what are they doing with the quesadilla? Yeah, and that salsa I thought was pretty gross. Yeah, the salsa wasn't great. It's just it was just weird. I I mean, Amelia, who has who's a, a much is more of a pretzel fan than us. She she really disliked the pretzel. She thought she, it was pretty bad. Yeah, she made a real show of like yeah. pulling it apart and showing us how bad it was. Yeah. yeah. She was very she was very Italian in that moment. She was like really uh you know is that the is, jersey? This is an insult to Chapanini. <laughs> <laughs> like, Amelia, calm down. <laughs> Uh, no, it was it was the chicken Caesar chopping was bad. It was a uh, uh, fact that nothing I had was good. And then also it makes a question, you know, like Tim's never done the podcast before. Why did we do this? You know, why did we do this to you? Well, right. I picked it. You Yeah, but about, we gave you a list four, of stuff. Four or five things, right? Uh, yeah, you picked a bad. You did. I mean, it's it's you know it's a roll of a die. But, but it yeah. doesn't seem like it should be a bad one, right? Like it's just like yeah. you, you look at all these salad places. I don't know, chop stop. Oh yeah, you can get a salad there. I don't know. It seems fine. All right. I'm I kind of ruined my day. I kind of felt bad because it felt like I was making the safe choice. Yeah, and I was basing it a bit uh, based on how much I laughed reading Chapanini. I thought that was funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but then I looked at the menu and I thought, okay, well there are some risks to take that might, yeah, you know promote some good conversation. And then there are some like safe choices on this. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, the menu is, it's a mess. It's all over the place. Yeah. It's uh, a, they're doing. Look, I, I, what are we at alcove? (laughs) 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 You know, I mean, if you live in LA, I remember I, I was living in LA and uh, Lily and I were first starting to date and she had some friends that uh, grew up here. And so they really know, like they have like really hard opinions, not all high end stuff. They have opinions about any food scene in any neighborhood across LA. Yeah. And um, 
And at one point I was like, oh yeah, well, I'm, you know, I'm going to Alco for, for lunch or something like that. And she's like, what? Why? <laughs> and, and I was like, I don't know. She's like, what could you possibly get at Alco? <laughs> and I, I told her, I don't know, this thing or that thing. And she's like, Tim, you can't go to Alcove ever again. <laughs> <laughs> and I, it was such an LA homegrown opinion where, you know, I was like, I don't know, I get the chilaquiles. And, and she responded, you could drive 20 minutes to Lincoln Heights and get the best chilaquiles of your life for like $7. I'm like, well, I'm not driving 20 minutes. I don't care. But her point remains that yeah. their their menu is just like, pew, 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 just everything. It's just like, <laughs> throw it on there, get it on there, satisfy everybody. That it was. It's also a very. I feel like in two thousand and ten or two thousand and nine, when it was whatever, when Alcove was newer, it was like it's like going to home restaurant or something yeah. too. It's the same. I'm That's, fine. I'm fine. Like TLDR, I'm fine with Alcove, but it provokes like such hard opinions because the menu is menu is gigantic. There's no theme. It's 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 a it's it's wise. It's a bit like a uh, uh, cheese cheesecake factory sort of deal. Yes, one hundred percent. I'm looking up their current menu now to see if there's any. Yeah, to get the chilaquiles are on there. They pulled back some stuff that actually I liked the turkey hummus melt and yes. I liked the salad. That's that's what I liked, and that's gone basically. See. And I liked a, uh, I liked the the uh, the house salad there. But you're right. There's like one billion things on that menu. And here they're doing the same. They are doing the same thing, but even worse than alcove food. Much well, worse than alcove food. You know why the turkey melt got removed? Was that I told Doofson it was my favorite thing on their menu, and he <laughs> he basically like spammed their comment section and said he he was like the turkey hummus melt gave me diarrhea so many times jesus oh, christ I'm getting diarrhea from this he was just trying to spite you basically that's yeah. fucking bullshit that's insane yeah. because i confronted him in front of a bunch of chicago people and i was like you weren't on main stage yeah right <laughs> you just took classes and like i ran into his family members in like iowa or wherever the fuck he's from you know and they were all like oh doofson did they call him doofson all their yes. last they're all they're all, all their named last names they call him doofson and they're like like oh isn't it so cool so you were you on main stage with Doofson? And I was like, no. He no, he didn't do it. You never drove the five hours to realize that he wasn't, he was a nobody there. Yeah. <laughs> no right. offense. A lot of great nobodies in every town in, 100%. in the country. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. No. Well, and his proof was like, then like, oh, I didn't, I wasn't on a main stage in Chicago. Then he'd like pull his shirt up and be like, then why do I have this tattoo of a teardrop like under my nipple? Oh yeah. And we'd be like, like. I do, why do you have that? He's like, that's what you get after you do your first year on the main stage. <laughs> no, no, like, no, you don't. No, you don't. You don't. You don't. You don't. Well, it's, it's not true, right? No, it's not true. Okay, okay. And and I, I didn't even know about that. Like, that yeah. was a lie. He had started independently. Yeah. And then he, like, he, like he slipped me ketamine or something like that, and I was in a K-hole, uh, and I yeah, kind of came to in this yeah. tattoo parlor with this guy about to give me the thing under my nipple. Oh, yeah. my God. And he'll, so, to legitimize his bogus little thing. Yeah, he'd be like, Baltz has it. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, no, has no. Baltz. So, but I'm very, I'm famously very resistant to ketamine. So. Well. <laughs> I was like, I was barely in the K-hole. Barely in the That's K-hole. on your Wikipedia, weirdly. I don't yeah. know if there's yeah. a whole section about your resistance to ketamine. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, if it wasn't on there before, it will be for real now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing too is that Doofson claims to have Dell Close's skull. He always says that he's the one who ended up with Dell Close's yes. skull, yeah. and he doesn't. He has doesn't. the skull from whatever cemetery plot is right next to Dell's grave, <laughs> yeah. um, which he should be in jail for. Yeah, it's desecration. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he, like he he got he removed it like way too soon. Too it was like I think that funeral was like a week ago. Yeah, at most. yeah. Bill Murray was still in town after saying goodbye to Dell at the hospital. Yeah, and yeah. And then he just robbed an adjacent grave just so he could say fresh, a fresh adjacent grave. Fresh grave yeah. yeah. And then went like, you know, went from theater to theater being like, do you want, do you, will you buy Dell's skull? Do you buy, trying to sell it. He's will you sell buy it. Dell's skull? Just think about that. Yeah. That's a piece of shit right there. And how old was he? He was in high school because that was 1999. Yeah. Yeah. What an asshole. Well, he was plugged in though. You know? was, here's, here's the other here's thing. The other was thing, he yeah. in high school? Was he in high school? Oh, here. here we go. I've heard this. I've heard like, I've, I've heard this. I had. It was Calpacus, right? Saw his birth certificate yeah. and said he was born uh, in 1965. Yeah, he's born 65. <laughs> he was born 65. And so, there's pictures of him in, with the first SNL cast as a 10 year old intern. Yeah, right. <laughs> From what we can tell based on like. Well, pictures. yeah, the picture that he showed us. Yeah. 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 He used to do blow with Carlin. 
That's what, yeah. Because he, and then we'd tell that story and then be like, wait, weren't you in high school in the 90s? And then he'd try to make it make sense. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, oh, well, I was like very young and he was almost like, yeah, gone. that's, he slipped up big time. Yeah. And then he, he brags that he, he gave Steve Martin the idea for King Tut. That's right. Right. And we're like, how old were you? There's no way. <laughs> He's like, well, that was before I was born. It was like, what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> This logic doesn't track at all. It's crazy that Doofson will be sixty in two years. I mean, he's. I mean, he will be if according if his if his birth certificate if is birth true. Certificate is true. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Who knows? Yeah. And yet he looks like us. So what's his secret? I he looks know. great. So he does yeah. look good. IVs. It's like a million bucks. This guy's getting IVs. I wouldn't be shocked if he was getting IVs. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's definitely getting IVs. Wait, why do we bring up Doofson to begin with? Um, he's gonna be on the podcast next week. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. January 12th, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm January 6th. Yeah. You insisted on that. Yeah, I insisted yeah. on it. I insisted. I just think it'll be funny. Yeah. You know, just a little Easter egg for the fans. Yeah, not a normal release date, but, you know, we'll accommodate you. Uh, any other thoughts on this, on the food here? Should we get to our fork scores? I think we should get to the fork scores. Yeah, too wet. That's the main thought. Very, yeah. very, way, way too wet. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL playoffs, is bringing you an offer that will help make the playoffs electrifying. New customers can bet 5 bucks on any game and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Some games happening this upcoming weekend include the Cleveland Browns, minus 3, versus the Houston Texans. The Kansas City Chiefs at home, minus 4, versus the Miami Dolphins. The Pittsburgh Steelers, the Buffalo Bills, the Bills minus 10. The Dallas Cowboys, minus 7.5 versus the Green Bay Packers. The Detroit Lions, minus 3 versus the LA Rams. And the Philadelphia Eagles, minus 3 versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Go Birds. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code DOUGHBOYS. New customers can bet just 5 bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code DOUGHBOYS. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. So, Tim, here's how this will work. Uh, we'll each go around. We'll give our closing argument for this particular chain for Chop Stop and then end that, uh, if you will, uh, with a fork score from zero to five. So you are a guest. We'll begin with you. Your thoughts, your fork score. My thought was definitely too wet, too much on the menu. That was, you got to pare it down. Yes. You know, um, I guess I give them some props for essentially saying we love chop salads. We're going to figure out every different way that we can pretend to present it to you in a, a, a different style. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So props to that. They're maximizing their one thing, unfortunately, um, unfortunately for, you know, the consumer. Uh, I, I gotta say, I want to give it zero forks, but looking wow. at your salad, yeah, I, I'll give it one fork because wow, one wow. fork. I wish I had ordered that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. And even though I didn't taste it and I might've been underwhelmed, I think I'll give it one fork. Wow. One fork. It's, it's tough. Cause I look, right. I feel five. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's hard for me to give it five forks. I'm gonna do that, but it's hard. But <laughs> it it is it's a difficult thing. Look, I know it's cheap. That's the thing about Chop Stop Ray is like it's a cheap, it's a it's affordable lunch. But is it even that cheap? Here, here's here's my here's my big thought about it. I was doing a little walk today with Evan Susser, and uh, we walked by Little Dom's. I see this guy right here. Sitting with some That's friends right. and, and your you, lovely wife. You all had yeah. a meet cute before our record. Before the record, I saw you, and you, there was a plate in front of you. I said, hey, don't touch that. You got a dough boys. To, and <laughs> right. I was joking at the time, and now in hindsight, I'm like, I feel so bad. If you did, if you did like, if you held back a little bit on on what you were going to eat before dough boys, because what you ended up getting was so shitty. I hedged my bets, so you don't have to feel that bad. I took a few bites. Lily had gotten, like, a, you know, 
some baguette, uh, you know, ham, cheese, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'd been on the picket line, and I was like, I just need to eat a couple things in case I'm disappointed. Yeah. So I, I ate like a quarter of her sandwich. You, it was a great move. It was a, it was a great bet because this place sucks, and 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 the, the guy, yeah. it's it's bad. It's yeah. it's, it's it's shitty. And I I was I I was with here. Here's where I knew it was bad. The guy who I was with, who was probably eyeing that plate in front of you quite a bit, uh, was Evan Susser. Yes. Uh, and Evan Susser, I said, he said, I got to get lunch. And I said, you know, we're getting chop shop. You can toss in an order if you want to. And Sus goes, no. <laughs> chop shop sucks. Yeah. Evan Susser turned down a free meal from chop shop. That's wild. Evan Susser doesn't turn down free meal from fucking anywhere in the world. That's the first time I've heard of this happening. He, he, he didn't want chop shop. He said no. And he's like, you ever had it before? I was like, no. He's like, it sucks. And it's bad. It's pretty bad. We're on a run of stinkers. I'm going to go one and a half forks. Wow. One fork, two tines. I mean, maybe I have to try some salads. I Like you, I'm like, but like, I don't like, cho- I don't like finely chopped salads. I, I agree. I don't like it either. I think it, it also, like, look, this is logistically, it's tougher to eat. Yeah. It's a little harder to fork this thing. The... The, by the way, Mitch, I brought up the menu because you talked about it being affordable. I wasn't sure that was true. Uh, just just to bring up one salad here, the Santa Fe chop, which we didn't get, uh, that's thirteen twenty nine. So it's not like this is like okay. A Amelia said cheap that today's place. order was about eighty five dollars. Yeah, and that was for you know what three salads, three wraps, yeah. and then a couple of other items. So you know it's okay. it's not super cheap. It's like it's about twelve dollars a salad or a or a chopinini. Okay, uh, I actually looked up. Or was able to find a January 2011 review uh, from the Burbank Leader local paper of the grand opening of the original Chop Stop. Wow. Uh, So I'm going to go ahead and read a little excerpt from this. This is by Stan Wauer. The Chop Stop, Burbank's newest fast food restaurant, advertises a salad loaded with fresh, wholesome foods that are nutritious, delicious, and fast. From my experience eating lunch at the Chop Stop with my wife on the day of its grand opening celebration, January 7th, it delivered in two categories, fast and nutritious. It's fast because everything is pre-chopped, but both my wife's Cobb Chop, uh, 924 at the time, and my Chop Shop Classic, 849 at the time, thanks Biden, had too much dressing, (laughs) which made the salads too soggy and lacking in Christmas. So too much dressing as identified Mm. in the initial review of the first location before it was a chain. Sauce. Too much much dressing, too much sauce. I also ordered the spicy Asian soup, not on their menu anymore, that wasn't even a bit spicy. When someone puts spicy on on its menu, I want it spicy. I want to sweat. I could not taste the pepperoncini and that edamame was not the right texture for the soup. The soup might have been more interesting if the edamame was cooked a bit longer and if there was more spice and the Chinese noodles were crispier. They also do not include a roll or crackers with a salad or soup. My wife purchased a roll for 79 cents that was stale. Again, stale bread, an issue we had today. She brought it to the attention of the manager. He checked it out, determined that it was indeed stale, and tossed it away without a word to my wife. No sorry or can I get you something else. The Chop Stop needs to go light on the dressing and give the customer additional dressing on the side for those who crave more. The Chop Stop is a great concept, a fast meal that's healthy. I was there on the Chamber of Commerce ribbon cutting day. Photographers were there. It was a little hectic. (laughs) I'm not going to rush to judgment. I will wait a couple of months and try it again. Uh, Two stars was the review at the time of January 2011. Well, we've waited a decade and are trying it again. I think it's regressed. I'm with the spoon man, and we're going to be ballpark buds here because I'm going to go one fork and two tines. I think this is 1.5 forks. The The salad was okay. Like, the salad was fine. And if I just had the salad, the Viva Mexico salad, I probably would have gone two and a half forks. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I'm okay with the Viva Mexico salad. <laughs> <laughs> How am I supposed to say it, huh? <laughs> No, you're right. You're, I, I, yeah, cosine. I mean, I maybe I I, I want to put two just to no, I, no. I really do go, think it's one. I'll go up to two. I'll say two forks. Well, so we'll be we'll be. What was the? Didn't we have a thing? It was this? a ladder. It was the ladder buddies. It was like some sort of like stepping la- ladder know, lads. Shows, yeah, well, it's, I think it was ladder lads. It's bad. Whatever it was, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. It was never that. good. Or was it like stair step club? Was it? It was a, yeah, like stepping stairs. Something was stepping in it or stepping stairs. Up. What was that? What was the reviewer's name? Evan Wauer. Uh, his name was uh, Stan Wauer. Stan Wauer. Stan Wauer. Yeah. Not wowed. 
<laughs> wow, wow, or he says that when yeah. it comes to the restaurant. <laughs> wow, wow, or what? <laughs> I'll go. I'll canonically go two forks. One fork, one and a half forks, two forks. Because I do think that 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 salad was fine. All right, that was our review of Chop Stop. Hey, it can only go up from here. That's nice. This, what do you, what do you mean in For the, the rest episode? Of the year. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a lot of room yeah, to grow. Yeah. yeah. Start well, with wait, the until, of... wait until you see what Doofson picks. Oh, yeah, that's a great <laughs> point. Fuck. Doofson's going to be like, you know, they franchise these dumpsters. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. And he's going to bring you dumpster food. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, it's great. And he'll have some fake receipt that he drew in like colored pencil yeah. with a purple Benicio del Toro dick on it. <laughs> And you guys will eat it. You'll get halfway through, and you'll be like, "God damn it, we got tricked into a zero fork situation." Do you know? You know what's funny? You know how he he wrote those reviews. He was over at my house, and he was, and I gave him. I put out hummus, and he was, he loved it. He was like, "What is this shit?" He was just shoveling hummus down his throat. Yeah, and I was like, "It's hummus," and then he just got quiet because I know that the turkey. He, I know that he came up with those turkey hummus reviews. I know it was him who spammed them. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, and also he claimed to have visited Greece. And like he didn't know again. what hummus was. Yes. And yeah. so again, it's just like, come on, dude, stop yeah. telling on yourself. Yeah. And my pe- I, pet peeve, I don't know if you have this with other people, but definitely with Doofson, I hate when he describes something that he likes as shit. Yeah. I yeah. love this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. It's shit? Is it shit or is it not shit? <laughs> like also, you know, finish chewing before you... Mm-hmm. Fuck. Yeah. Well, he was doing that when he was like showing family portraits. It was like it was like him and his mom, and he pointed at his mom. was like, "I love this shit." And yeah. He said, "That's your, your mom. It's really inappropriate." And he's like, "No, because I love her." You know. Yeah. That's how I say it. That's yeah, how it the comes off say weird. It. it comes off weird. It does. Yeah. After that hummus thing, I, it, like forever, like f- this is for like a couple years after that, I would be like, I would pull out eggs, and he's like, I can't believe that. Hummus comes from that. I was like, "What the fuck is he talking about?" <laughs> I think he thought like if you crack an egg open, he thought like, the hummus, hummus is... was inside. I think he or thinks there was hummus an egg is inside eggs. Yeah, in Gre- like <laughs> look dish. I don't know. That's doofsit. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. But... Do you want to know? Not really. That's, but again and again, I'm always like, I get mad, and then I'm, I take a deep breath and I say, "Do you even want to know?" Yes. About yeah. Yeah. Doofson? He's pretty pissed that you took the January 6th spot, too. He told us that. He wanted he wanted the January 6th spot. He did really spot. want it. Well, yeah. you dodged a bullet. That's, that's true. <laughs> you really did, because yeah. you, you have no idea what he would say. That's great. That's that's a great And point. he would have figured out a way to record it from outside. Yeah. So that if you're like, you know what, we got to scrap this episode. Yeah, We're yeah. just going to be a week behind starting in January. Like, he would have put it, he would have uploaded it himself. Yeah, the Doofs and Pod episode one or something would go up. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. G- look. <laughs> We hate this fucking guy, but we also we love him. He's, we love him. He's our friend. He's our friend. We love the guy. If he needs anything, we'll be there for we'll him. We'll be there for him. <laughs> He's got a special coming out. Yeah. Um. So that'll be you know. I hope I hope that goes well for yeah, him. Yeah. Fox Nation special. Yeah. Um. I'm excited to see it. Yeah. He said uh, he had, he was in the hospital for like a day and a half after he sunned his asshole for the op- like the cold open of that special. Yeah. Right. Um. And uh, yeah, he fell asleep. He fell, he fell asleep. And he was outside for like two and a half days. And just, you know, he was he had sunscreen everywhere except his ass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just got torched. Um, Which I, he's using it in the opening, so I wonder what it's. I wonder, yeah, I wonder what, what it is. And then he filmed the special like, well, like eighteen hours after he got out of the hospital. Yeah. So he's walking around like the special, like you know, he's he's moving the cord like most stand ups do, you know. Yeah. yeah. But he's like barely moving. You could tell he's in so much pain <laughs> from his so asshole. Sad. And you know who funded it? Calcus. Yeah. yeah. Fucking Calcus. That's where they're putting the chops. That's. I mean, we we maybe inadvertently. Contributed to, to Doofson's next special. That's all wow. I'm saying. Yeah, so. Fox Nation sponsored by Chop Stop. <laughs> Economics of this industry, it's wild. Uh, it's time for a segment. This is Slop Quiz New Year, New Edition, or should all we right. say Chew Year, Chew Edition. All right. Uh, this is compiled by uh, our associate producer, Amelia. Uh, so I'll read you some questions about the new year and food, and then you can buzz in with your name, and uh, I will track who uh, gets things correct. All Jeremy's right, licking my uh, finger. <laughs> that's another do something. Hey, lick my finger. You're like, that's not what you yeah, say. That's not, yeah, it's not a thing you say. Jemmy won't say. lick Doofson's finger. Oh, she won't go like anywhere that. near it. <laughs> she, she said that's nasty. <laughs> like barked it out and you yeah. put it yeah, through yeah. an AI translator. <laughs> the only thing she's ever nasty. said was that's nasty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, first question. 
According to a survey from Forbes Health of 1,005 U.S. adults conducted in November of 2022, what percentage of Americans feel pressured to set a New Year's resolution? I will. This is multiple choice, so I'll read the options and then you can buzz in. Okay. Uh, a, 7%, B, 29%, C, 45%, or D, 63%. I'm going to... You can buzz... Either one of us can buzz in with our names. Yeah, just say your name aloud. I, think I have I'll an answer. You. Mitch is going to go. Do you want to go? Yeah. You got to say your name. Uh, Mitch. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, D, 63% or whatever it was. It's not 63. Tim, oh, you got to guess? Uh, I'll, what, what was... What 7%, were... 29%, or 45%. Ooh, I'm. I'll go forty-five percent. It's B twenty-nine percent. Wow, that's wrong. Kind of an interesting frame. That's like, just wrong. It's it's, it's people wrong. Feel way more. Pressure. I think yeah. people do I feel think, a lot more pressured. Like yeah, half of the people I talk to, even if they just pretend they never did it, I think that's what it is. You just pretend that you didn't. Oh, so you think that people are actually committing to their New Year's resolution, but they're pretending that they didn't. Yes, I, I, I think it's it's that sort of thing of like people are showing the discipline, but they just don't want to admit it. Oh, yeah. so they're like, actually, you know, I had a sober January, worked out every single day, and people were like, hey, how's that going for you? Oh, I bailed after like six days. <laughs> do you ever, do you, are you a New Year's resolution guy? No, no, uh-uh, no, because because why, I, I would just, I would give up in February even if I did commit to it. Yeah. So I'd rather, no, I, I no, you know, it's like going to church, like I'd rather pray straight to my Savior inside my head. Right. Yeah, yeah, um, same. I'm not telling you who my savior is, <laughs> uh, but uh, that'll be on my wiki page. Yeah. <laughs> Has a certain savior. Uh, they will. They will write too much stuff about it. Uh, um, hmm. I I think that people are just like. I mean, I do do this, but I I'm like I'm gonna like do stuff right, but I don't have a specific one. But doesn't everyone like, hey, it's the new year, I'm going to start over? And I think it's very common. I, I just, I think just the phrasing of the question is, what percentage <sighs> of Americans another, feel pressured okay. to set one? And I think that might have been, people just might have answered that, the, the weird phrasing of it. Uh, all right, next this question. This is a fucking Culcus Industries fucking poll. I mean, like, it, 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 it could be just like a bad poll. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't I don't uh, have the source of the poll in front of me, but I will look up it. Okay. Right. Look, uh, look it up. Next up. Uh, what are Oli Bolin? Hope I, I might be pronouncing that wrong. What are Oli Bolin, a traditional New Year's treat in the Netherlands? A, fried pastry balls, B, mm. chocolate truffles, C, dumplings, or D, mini pancakes? Mm. Oli Bolin. Oli Bolin. Uh, Netherlands wait, New Year's treat. you say treat. deep fried bowls is one of the answers? A, fried pastry balls, B, chocolate truffles, C, dumplings, D, mini pancakes. One is balls. A is balls? Yes. Okay. I thought you were saying bowls. Tim. Uh, I'm going to go C. Not dumplings. Mitch, remaining uh, options are A, fried pastry balls, B, chocolate truffles, D, mini pancakes. I feel like the mini pancakes may be it, but I'm going to go A instead of fried balls. Yeah, you're going to take it. It is nice. Ali Ballin or donut-like fried pastries it's, 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 made it by dropping like a scoop of dough mixed with currants or raisins into a deep fryer and then sprinkled with powdered sugar. I mean, we didn't know. We, we didn't know that. <laughs> but neither of us knew yeah. that, I guess, is the question, is the answer. Dutch is so, I love Dutch. Yeah. I, I only know a handful of words, but I, uh, when I was, I did a semester abroad, that was when I was on yeah. the basketball team in France. Oh man. And they were a bunch, there were no other Americans there. So I just hung out with all, all these international kids because the French people didn't want to hang out with people, you know, who weren't as fluent as them. And, uh, um, were you in the, were you in the Nether Netherlands or? No, I was in the South of France, but there were all these Dutch kids there. Oh shit. And, uh, I just found like that language is the, is charming and it's so funny. Yeah. It's yeah. like sarcastic German. Hmm. You know, they're all like, Willkommen. man. <laughs> all seem like they're slightly detached, like kind of judging you, but in a fun yeah. way, they're not, you know, there's another bad history. Well, I'm sure, no, there's a really bad history. <laughs> I've always heard from, and my, I've never, I've never, you know, crossed an ocean, but I have, I, we, we all have friends who have been at part of Boom Chicago, which is uh, the yeah. uh, comedy theater that's in the Netherlands. And I remember here, I think it was Jim Woods telling me about like a, like, cause Dutch people are just very forthright. They will just tell you exactly what they think. And like had talking to someone after the, uh, like an audience member after the show. And he's like, ah, oh, did you like the show? And they're like, no, I did not find it funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Next up. Boom Chicago is, I feel like when you go to Boom Chicago, people come back from that. Like they went to war. I'm like, yeah, like right. a changed person. Something. Right. Something happened over there. The, doing just improv doing... like seven days a week or something just to 
it changes you. You're or doing something. like ten shows a week for tourists, a lot of whom like English is a second language. It's got to be so like just taxing to try to to pull off. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. She's trying to get a, Dope Boy should try to get a residency at Boom Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, next up. What popular Mexican food is often served with menudo, ca- cow's stomach soup on New Year's? A, tamales, B, quesadillas, C, churros, D, Viva Mexico chop. <laughs> well, I'm, I, I think that I, I'm pretty sure it's not D. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it would be, oh. Would be pretty coincidental, though. What's <laughs> what's D doing on this list? Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm. I mean, there's no way Wagger came up with that as like a funny answer or something, right? <laughs> no, he's pulling these from the internet. Yeah, right? yeah. This, yeah. Is, no, this is a real survey. Hmm. So what, can you say the, the, the... Tamales, quesadillas, or churros? Mitch. Yeah. Tamales, A. You are correct. Wow. Mitch, Mitch has two points. Which uh, means with ahead. this quiz, I think it's almost over. It's this is gonna be this is this is a hard one. Yeah, this one's tough. Uh, we're gonna keep it going. Next Charles question. Too sweet. I thought it was too sweet. Had to be something more savory. Anyway, all right, let's keep going. Yeah, you made an educated guess. It was just an educated guess. Yeah. yeah. I know there's a lot of like that. That would be a thing. You know, my parents lived in San Pedro for a little bit, but we like go to like the tamale shop. They'd have a bunch of uh, you know tamales for. Uh, for for Christmas, it was like a big like oh, you know, that's a big fun. holiday thing. I'm not a huge um, tamale guy. Yeah. I'm not the, the the like that's the that's the that's like the it's wrapped in corn right, right yeah. in the corn husk. I'm not a huge tamale. Guy. I man, you, I, I've had some great. I ones. mean, I think I've had bad ones. Yeah, that's that's the, the, the big thing. I think a lot of them. Also, this is one of those interesting things, and I, I know I'm saying tamale, but like this the singular of of tamale in Spanish is tamal, mm. and then you pluralize it by adding the es. But that's not how we pluralize words in English, so we crop off the. S, maybe a rebracketing thing that's going on there linguistically. I don't maybe. know exactly what it is. Although I actually did know that, and Doosan's the guy who taught me that. That's right. <laughs> um, I think you're that, getting that info from Doosan. I actually did. Now I don't know if it's true because I'm like Doosan yeah. did tell me that. Because, mm. and this is again pre smartphone, yeah. so you can't, you'd love to re- retroactively like get this guy kind of canceled or yeah. something. But he used to, like, you know, it's unfortunate. It's guy yeah. stuff. Yeah. Right. But we're not running from it. He used to put his penis on your shoulder and he'd say, touch my tamal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and it's unfortunate, but it's part of our history, right? Right. right. So like, we got to be honest about that. That he used to do that. And you know how many times I was like, "Oh, I always touched first. Why yeah. do you touch first? Right. Well, he'd do it right, like as we were trying to decide what we were gonna like, how we were gonna order out, or yeah, you know, yeah. Get I was pizza like, oh, Deuce, and got it. Oh, what a nice gesture! To, and then no, it's his, it's his, it's his dick. Yeah, that's. Not, I mean, that's nice. We're talking about what we're gonna eat for for food, and then you just put a tamal on my shoulder. Like, of course, I'm gonna touch it. It's only human. Uh, but yeah, he did. He'd pull that all the time. I guess that's where I got that information. So who knows if it's true or not. Uh, next up, which generation feels the most pressure to set a New Year's resolution? Here are the generations. A, baby boomers. B, generation X. C, millennials. Or D, gen Z. The Zoomers. Wait, it's, uh, what's the question? Which generation feels the most pressure to set a New Year's resolution? Oh, I'll tell you which one. Tim. Fuck. <laughs> millennials. Not millennials. Oh, I'll tell you which one. Gen X, and I'll tell you why. The grind on MTV. Uh, you know, all these shows that they watched were they wanted the, the perfect body, like the grind mm, right, on right. MTV. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And then they'd, they'd re-air the grind on VH1. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're watching shows like that all the time. Yeah, Celebrity Fit Club. Right. That's also Gen Xers watch that too. Yeah. Uh, it's not Generation X. It oh actually, my God, that's crazy. It actually is Generation Z. Wow. And that makes me think that I wonder if it's just a youth thing. Like young people are just like, ah, I got to fix some shit. And then you get older and get more set in your ways. I don't know. Um, all right, can no I, get, can no I, one gets can a point I inter- there. interject yeah. quickly? Yeah. This quiz sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Did Amelia come up with it? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Amelia. <laughs> Wait, you thought it was me? Yeah, I thought it was you this time. That's why you were comfortable saying it? Yeah. <laughs> I think this quiz I also, is good. I also have a little bit of a cheat here. I don't know if you noticed. I can kind of, oh shit, it didn't work. <laughs> what I are kinda, you doing? I can kind of pull Tim's microphone away from him if I try hard enough. Yeah, well, don't do that. You try hard I'm, enough. I'm just, I'm just saying. It's really easy. I have to try hard at all. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm, I'm saying I could, I, you know, I could, I could see. He can do it to me too. 
Well, don't create too much problems uh, for post production. Okay, 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 okay. Rattling Sorry. the mics. All, right, all, right, all right, all right. I'm just saying. For Are you picking up quiz. the mic rattling? Is that a thing? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, <laughs> it's fine. Don't rattle the mic. I won't. I won't. I won't. This, is, this is the last time <laughs> I'll okay. touch it. Uh, okay. Next up, this Spanish tradition consists of eating what with each of the twelve o'clock bell strikes at midnight to welcome the new year? A, a pomegranate seed. B, a grape. C, an olive. D, candy corn. Wait, what? The Spanish. This Spanish tradition consists of eating what with each of the 12 o'clock bell strikes at midnight to welcome the new year? Tim, pomegranate seed? It's not pomegranate seed. And then, so olive, uh, that's grape, olive. grapes, or yeah. grape, olive, or candy corn. And it's Spanish, you said? Yes. We're talking Spain. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with grapes. Mitch, you are correct. You have wow. three points. Uh, the tradition is called uh, Las Doce Uvas de la Suerte, meaning the 12 grapes of luck. Each grape and clock bell strike represents each of the coming 12 months. How about that? You know, I just thought Spain, I don't know. I was like, you know. I was going to say olives. I would have My first two would have been wrong. Right, because there's Spanish olives. That's yeah. yeah. I would not have thought grapes. I don't think Spanish grapes. I just thought they're, you know, they're close to, uh, you know. France or whatever. I well, guess. I mean, every country has grapes, don't they? Yeah, that's true. Mitch, you have you have three points, right? Yeah, you have three points. Okay, so there are three questions left. So oh Tim, you're God. still in it. Jeez. I mean, we could stop There's... too. Oh no, 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 no! <laughs> we don't please. have to do all of them. <laughs> we have to, we have to, we have to finish this. Uh, which type of fish is commonly eating, eaten at the stroke of midnight in Poland and Scandinavia to bring prosperity in the new year? So this is a fish that's eaten in Poland and Scandinavia. Uh, as a New Year's tradition. A, smoked salmon. B, pickled herring. C, tuna. D, sardines. This is, I heard Tim. I was just it's like going, it's like, this is a podcast equivalent of going to the DMV. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is fun. B? It is B. Yeah. Tim, you're oh, on the board. Shit. All right. Wait, what was the fish? Pickled herring. Pickled herring is that, the answer. That's good. Uh, all right, next question. Kind of na- everyone's getting kind of like, why is everyone eating right before? Everyone's like shoving stuff in, like as the clock counts down to New Year's. Yeah, <laughs> is that's that interesting. What's happening? It's Strange. also like because America is such like a gluttonous country. It's interesting that we don't have any equivalent. Yeah, we look right. pretty we good in this scenario. Yeah. We're not yeah. doing. We're not doing anything crazy. Oh. All right, next up. Uh, which did I ever tell my story about my friend? Uh, in you, like I my my college roommate. Mm-hmm. I think I've told this on the podcast. My college roommate told me this story, but like he was like from Salt Lake City, but he kind of like fell in with like the SLC punk crowd, like because there's like a very like counterculture, um, like like against the LDS there. That's like very much like you know, a a, a little bit more like a, just a rebellion to that 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 yeah. Mormon traditionalism. And so he said he was at a New Year's party once. Oh, and, you did tell me. I love this story. And this was in high school. He was at a New Year's party. And it was approaching midnight, uh, and one of the punk kids says, "Like, all right, it's time to fuck in the new year." And then an orgy broke out. Like people just started, and he was just like sitting there watching, like not involved at all, because he's like kind of a shy kid. And he said people were just like fucking, uh, like and trying to come, like right at midnight. <laughs> I was like, "That's insane!" Wow. That's what we've we've thrown doughboys New Year's parties. Just Nick and I. Were like, oh. <laughs> Oh no! We like, have to come by midnight. <laughs> oh, no way! It'll be one thirty a.m. For sure. <laughs> Just both of us trying so hard. <laughs> I can do it. Um, uh, that is so yeah, truly insane. I've uh, never even been around behavior like that. I know. Yeah, it feels like eyes wide shut level. It to really me. does. But I guess people fuck, you know, and sometimes they're well, fucking people, crowds. People are horny. I guess, I guess that, that kind of fucking. All right, next up. Which New Year's resolution is most commonly cited among Americans? It's three to one. Uh, Mitch has the advantage. Uh, here are your options. Most common New Year's resolution in America. A, improved fitness. B, weight loss. C, improved diet. D, improved mental health. Mitch. Tim. Fuck. Ooh, no, I think you got it. Ty goes to the... The guest. No, no, I think you clearly got I'm, it. I'm ahead too. I, you, 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 you I think. I, well, I wonder if you'll take my guess too. Yeah, maybe you might. You might pick the wrong thing, and then I'm. Wags. Well, I, I heard Mitch first. Yeah, but I will too. let you defer. No, go I'm... for it. Go for it. Weight loss. Not weight loss. Oh, what are the choices again? A improved <laughs> fitness. B weight loss. C improved diet. D improved mental health. Okay. Wait. Wait. Sorry, I was looking at Mitch. Improved fitness. Improved diet. <laughs> Improved mental health. I'm going to go improve fitness. 
No, it's improved mental health. Wow. wow. Okay. Interesting resolution. Yeah. That's Gen Z, because most generations are just like, what is that? <laughs> uh, 45%, that's the number one, compared to improved fitness at 39%. Uh, wow. I was close. Yeah, uh, you're, yeah. All right, we're going back to Europe. A uh, in Italy, which of the following dishes is this is the last one? This is the last one. Which also, of the following... this, this one's worth three points. Just... Yeah. Well, yeah. there is a bonus question, Mitch, which we can do. Oh, my God. <laughs> in Italy, which Does of the following... pull out? <laughs> You fucking sleep. I'm, that's what I'm saying. Which of the following dishes? Sucks. Hey, does this couch pull out? <laughs> hey, this couch is about to get me pregnant. <laughs> hey, I hope this couch pulls out. <laughs> no, the fucking couch hybrid kid. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, I'm not going to believe this. It's a half couch coming out. <laughs> There's also a scenario where the couch is fucking me instead of me fucking the couch. Oh, no, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> the couch is inside you. <laughs> <laughs> in Italy, which of the following dishes is traditionally consumed on New Year's Eve and is said to bring good luck? Uh, so there's a good luck dish in Italy. A, pickled eggplant. B, pasta and beans. C, stuffed peppers. D, pork sausage with lentils. This is in Italy? This is in Italy. I think I know the answer. Go for it. Mitch, pasta and beans. It's not pasta and beans. Oh, that was a funny yeah, one. What are the choices again? Pickled eggplant, stuffed peppers, or pork sausage with lentils? Tim, B. That was also pasta and beans as well. Oh, it was? Yeah, oh, that, I thought that. I thought pasta I, and beans I skip, was C. I skipped B. I know. It's like it's B with stuffed peppers is what you were saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not stuffed peppers. It's Shit. pork sausage with lentils. <laughs> uh, known as cotacini con lettuccini, something like that. The lentils represent money and good fortune. Mm. Do you want to wow. do the tiebreaker question? Or we yeah, I mean, yeah, let's, the do hell it. let's do it. This a, is a three-pointer. A yeah, popular three-pointer. Wait, well, also, what was the answer to it? It was, it was, a... it was pork sausage with lentils. Uh, okay. All right, here's the bonus question. A popular New Year's dish in the American South known as Hoppin' John is made with black-eyed peas, rice, collard greens, and cornbread. What do the three primary ingredients symbolize? Those are peas, greens, and cornbread. Jesus, it's not multiple choice, huh? No. Peas? Peas, greens, and cornbread. It's called Hoppin' John. Neither of you from the South, obviously. So certainly it was something of a challenge. I, I certainly didn't know this one. Um... And, and this is like essay format. Yeah, this question? is just open ended. You're just saying what do, peas equal blank, greens equal blank, cornbread equals blank. Cornbread equals hay, mm -hmm. greens equals grass, and beans equals bugs. <laughs> I mean, it was peas, not beans, but I'll, they, you're still wrong. Um, I'm, I'm none gonna, of those are correct. Oh, I'm wrong. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Man. Couch is gonna fuck you extra hard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with uh, like money, health, prosperity. You know what? Not bad because it is greens uh -oh. are money, cornbread is gold, and peas are coins. They're all like sort of money prosperity related. So I'll give you two points and call it a tie. Yeah. Wow. All right. All right. I like all right. that. Yeah. I like that. Wow. Uh, hey, just like a restaurant about your like feedback, that. let's open up the feedback. And today we have an email from Sam. Sam writes. As a new wife of a Doughboys listener, I have a wedding question for you. At our wedding, and at many we've been to before, there was a late night post-dinner and cake snack. We opted for the simpler and cheaper option of using a venue-provided snack. It was carnival-themed, and we were able to grab soft pretzels, cotton candy, churros, and popcorn while dancing. However, we've seen it done where people order pizza, McDonald's, and ice cream trucks. My question is, what is the best or most exciting late night wedding food? P.S. To be fair, I introduced my husband Josh to Doughboys years ago, so technically I might be your whiny listener, and he might be my hot wife. Thanks, Sam. I don't. I don't. I don't believe that. Yeah, to probably be not true. true. Uh, Tim. Um, Tim. But also, <laughs> I was hoping that that letter just turned into a thing of like, please, I please rescue me. I don't want to be in this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> That's what <we> were hoping. <laughs> Tim, you you mentioned that you're uh, you're married to uh, to Lily, past Doughboys guest Lily. Uh, and, well, that well, was pretty recent, right? Yeah, that was uh, yeah, almost two years ago. Wow. Okay. What what did you do for your wedding food? Wedding food was uh, we I think we catered. There was a place called Fundamental. I think was okay. our catering company. I hope I'm getting that right. Uh, where where was the wedding? Highland Park. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So here in L.A. Yeah. And, nice. Uh, 
Um, I think it was, you know, there was like a fish, you know, chicken vegetarian option. Uh, the food was great. Like uh, it's the, it's the, one of the few times I've ever heard wedding guests talk about the food wow. a month after the wedding. Wow. You know, that's awesome. That's Most huge. people are like, I can't remember what it was. Yeah, yeah. And then I think the dessert was kind of a dessert bar. So it wasn't like cake. It was, it was like a bunch of different desserts and, and that was good. And late night, um, late night we ended up. We ended up at, uh, oh man, that place on, on York. Um, oh, so you went to a different location. We did. That's yeah. Fun. Yeah. And that, that place has, you know, oh God, what, what am I thinking of? It has a big, uh, they turned their the, parking lot into a Hermosillo. Outdoor. Yes. Hermosillo. Yes. So we ended up at Hermosillo and they have great, they have like good little food, you know, like a good little late night food menu. Casey answers a lot of stuff for us. We're, we <laughs> yeah. kind of just sit here like nodding and dumb. <laughs> and then he answers him or Emma they answer for us. Yeah. Uh, that's that. Uh, rad. And I don't remember Doofson like behaved himself that night, which was great. He was like, he was really well behaved that night. He yeah. was. Yeah. Well, yeah. we put, yeah, he, he had a ball gag in his mouth and one in his ass um, <laughs> for the whole ceremony. <laughs> and then uh, we took the one out of his ass. Yeah. And we gave him some like food suppository type stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, you guys, yeah, you tranked him up a little bit too, I believe. Right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, I mean, we made him sign like liability waivers and stuff right. like that. So if if you know if the suppository had gone wrong or something like that, like we were covered. And, yeah. Uh, and it was fun. It was cool to see like a lot of my family and her family meeting each other for the first time, watching Doofson like, you know, get the suppository. <laughs> right, right. It was right. It was right in. Yeah, it was in between our first dance and our dance with our parents mm, oh, that's that perfect. we put the suppository in. And we kind of like, you know, we tackled them and we did it right there on the dance floor and stuff. And, <laughs> and a lot of people from out of town that were like, whoa, yeah. LA, mm. this is LA, you know? And a lot of people were like, California, you know? And like, yeah. like, this is what I thought it would be. Yeah. Um, and we we're like, no, 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 no. This Whatever. is a certain, this is a this special guy. kind yeah, of this guy. Isn't, this, yeah. this is apolitical. This is not liberal stuff. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is like putting this asshole in his place. Right. Yeah. And and like ha and having a good story like this to share on podcast. Right, right. Deuce's family also, Deuce's family was there too. They they also, he, he like if he comes to a wedding, he brings his whole family. Well, they, yeah, they crashed like, the wedding. Yeah. That's like, I like, my plus one is my family. Yeah. That's what he told us he was going to do. Yeah. Like he can't do that, but mm -hmm. he just did it. He went and did it. And, yeah. Who wants to turn down like Doofson's mom? It's just like no, she's right. sweet. She's sweet. She's really sweet. She's a sweet lady. Yeah, yeah. they're she's so sweet. Yeah, she's really. Sweet. She's really sweet. <laughs> well, Mike, you <laughs> you slept with her, right? <laughs> when you were single. Oh boy! Look, you broke up their his like Doofson's parents. Doofson's gonna. <laughs> I, I, you I broke up their marriage. I can't even get into this, but his mom's really sweet. His, she's, she's <laughs> really sweet. sweet. Mom. They've been married, <laughs> what, like seventy-one years? They were married like yeah. seventy-one years. They got married yeah. very young. Yeah, yeah. Married really like right young. out of high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think right out of middle school they actually got like. Uh, I think she's not that old. She's not that, yeah. Mm, well, she's older than Doofson. She is old. She's yeah. definitely. Older He's than in Doofson. his sixties, so <laughs> <laughs> she's pretty old. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you know she's really sweet. She's a sweet lady. She's, she's so sweetheart. sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. Like I don't like to bring it up too much around Doofs, and it's a it's a a very Stifler's mom sort of a situation. If, but if you for you, it was her. demisexual. You were like, I, I feel so much for her. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, yeah. And it yeah. was heartbreaking, and I, I I'll never forgive Doofson for this for what he did to you. That clip that went viral of her great grandchild, uh, yeah, like approaching you and being like, Why did you? break up my great grandparents yeah marriage yeah 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 that was that was that was like that was complicated that like made me regret it a little bit is when the great grandchild came up to me and said that but you know uh you got your shot you put him you put him in his place by pulling out that chart that showed like the intensity of the orgasm that you had with her <laughs> that i think then the kid was speechless <laughs> they didn't know what he was looking at <laughs> He did. I thought it was a perfect time for him to learn. <laughs> yeah, he was what, 11, 12? Yeah. It's about to happen it's, for it's him. It's about to happen <laughs> for him. Yeah. I said that. I said, this is about to happen for you. Um, but, you know, I still talk to her. So yeah. we, we're, it's, it's, look, we love the guy. We love, we love him. Yeah. We love Doofson. Uh, so, and I'm glad that we, I'm glad, like, sometimes people <laughs> will be like, why are they talking about Doofson so much? I'm glad we talked about him. I'm glad episode. we talked about it. This was cathartic to get <laughs> yeah. some of this out here. And to get it out so that when you're talking about him, it's kind of all business. 
Mm-hmm. You might have the shortest episode ever where you're like, all right, here's what we ate. What are your right. forks? Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe a quiz. And then Just you... totally locked in. Yeah, yeah get yeah, out of there. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, my uh, Mitch, did you do you have any? I'm trying to think and to think of any memorable late night bites because part of the thing is like for me for weddings, I'm usually out there early. I just like I, I can't. I'm not sticking around the whole night. Yeah, I seem to remember you leaving some weddings early. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do know my brother. He when he got married, he just got married in his backyard, mm-hmm. and uh, then afterwards he was like like everyone went to In and Out Burger, and that was like a cool like. Thing. Here's here's a, here's a wacky wedding yeah. I remember. Yeah. You came out to one wedding. Yeah. You missed the ceremony. That's you got, right. You got there after the ceremony, and then you left early. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can get away with just showing up to the reception, and uh, people will know you. You people won't know you weren't at the ceremony. I don't think they. I don't know if they know that you weren't at the ceremony. Yeah. Yeah. We also walked to watch a Celtics game at that during that wedding. That's right. Yeah. It was a great wedding. It that was, was a good, lot of fun. It was, a good, it was a good time. Whose wedding was that? It was Mrs. Doofson, the guy that she married after Mr. Doofson. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you yeah. kind of broke up their their marriage, and then she married someone else. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. was a whole a weird thing. Well, it's a rebound, because the guy's like, he's a mess. He doesn't compare to, like, he doesn't fit into the family. No, no, no. No, 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 no one no. accepts him. No, yeah. no. Well, he was, like, uh, uh, he was the physical inspiration for the clumps. <laughs> He was. He, like that was like he's a like, guy and he's just kind of been hanging around Hollywood since then, you know, mm. trying to get other stuff started. But like they got I guess Doofson was friends with him and then like introduced his mom to him. And, mm. Yeah, uh, it's yeah, real match made in hell. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's it sucks. And the guy's like, you know, he's he's one of those guys that's sad but talks sex all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, really, yeah. that's a bad combo. And then you know it's when he what he's the stuff he's telling you is about Doofson's mom. And like she's a sweet lady. She's so she's sweet. Such a sweet. You don't want to be hearing that she's stuff. She's so sweet. I know. Just let her live with her like what? Like 26 great great grandkids. <laughs> like just let her just leave her alone, you know? I mean, let her have an occasional dalliance with someone who absolutely rocks her world. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise like let her live her, her last chapter in peace yeah, yeah i yeah. agreed and uh and you know mike like absolutely shut the door on her second to last chapter with a bang yeah um literally <laughs> based on the chart literally <laughs> <a bang. laughs> she's she's sweet she's a she's sweet, sweet lady. lady she's so sweet By the way, are that were was the inspiration for these the clumps the the doughboys pictures <laughs> the doughboys logo the doughboys the logos yeah yeah very clump esque um, I think we fit in at the, the the table when they were chanting Hercules I think we'd have, I think we would, would <laughs> sit right in there you, oh there. you didn't get cut out of that movie <laughs> <laughs> just there's an extended cut of the clumps with me and Weiger in the <laughs> not speaking just chowing down like hey this family's really funny this focus, really focus funny. groups were just confused they were like who are those guys yeah and so that they, we, we didn't make they're the like, final cut it, they were like it makes sense that they're like we get why they'd be there but who are they yeah, like, we right. never really know and then they're like the Doughboys, and like we don't get what yeah, this we is. Don't know what that is. We've had this podcast for like twenty some odd years. People <laughs> didn't realize that. Been around for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, to get the Doughboys Double, our weekly bonus episode, you can join the Golden or Platinum Play Club at patreoncom slash Doughboys. Our producer is Emma Brink. Our associate producer is Amelia Marino. Our engineer is Casey Donahue, and our video editor is Mike Dorfman. What the hell is this fucking NPR type? Throw some off. credits in there, acknowledging oh, the people fuck? who work on the show. Fuck you don't them. like it? No, they're not in front of the <laughs> camera, baby. <laughs> Uh, you know who is in front of the camera? Our guest, Tim Baltz. Tim, thank you so much for being here. What hey, my Please pleasure. Come back. Yeah, yeah, so fun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, We'd yeah. love to. Hopefully, yeah. eat something that we actually like. Yes. What, what three would forks you, or above. You could have gone to. You could have cho- Like you could have said bourbon steakhouse, and we could have gone there. You know. Oh yeah. my God, that's on the table. Yeah, I didn't anything, know that. Anything is on the table. Let's could, have a good meal together. I love that idea. That'd be great. Doofs and not invited. We sent we sent him an uh, an a Google Calendar invite for the next day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that idea. Yeah, and then just like you fucked it up. Yeah. I think that's a good. I think that's a good yeah, idea. Yeah, that's a good yeah. idea. Yeah. Uh, Tim, do you have anything you'd like to plug? <laughs> I'll, all right, so I'll plug the Hey Randy podcast on the CBB World Patreon. That's with uh, great people: Dan Lippert, Mary Stone, Lily Sullivan, um, Brett Morris. What and, a crew! And a, and a, and a, a great cast of recurring guests and stuff. Uh, and that's fun. That's one of the most fun things I've I've ever done. I've ever been a part of. I love those people. So. Uh, listen to that. Uh, you can watch Shrink on Peacock. You stream the only season that we got to make. 
Which Amelia worked in post. That's right. On, wow. Which was, yeah, she was That's great. Wild. Crucial part of that team. And then uh, you can stream uh, all three seasons of Righteous Gemstones on on uh, HBO or Max or whatever, whatever it's called in <laughs> next year, <laughs> this year. <I> don't know. <laughs> Those are great shows and a great guest. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, likewise. Great, great host. Yeah. Oh, come hey, on. three God cheers for the host. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hip hooray. hooray. That'll do it for this episode of Doughboys. Until next time with the Spoon Man, Mike Mitchell. I'm Nick Weiger. Happy eating. See ya. That's uh, my least favorite thing I've ever had to do. <laughs> <laughs> Want to dress like the Doughboys? We don't recommend that. Instead, get all your favorite Doughboys merch at doughboys.kinshipgoods.com. Sources for the intro are in the episode description. That was a HeadGum Podcast.